Hello and welcome to this online career expo hosted by Avia Solutions Group. My name is Michael Jonga and I'm delighted to be your host today. Now we're being joined by hundreds of people from around the world and of course by our expert speakers panel from airlines and companies across Avia Solutions Group. However, before we start, I want to make sure you're all logged into our Slido.com event page. Just go to Slido.com and use the event code hashtag Career Expo so you can submit your questions at any point during this event and we will get through as many questions as possible. Make sure to also include the name of the company you would like to direct your question to within your question. So we're all set now. Let's meet our speakers panel. Today, you will hear from a range of speakers from across the group's uh, companies and airlines, which includes Avion Express, BBN Indonesia, BAA Training, Smartlinks Airlines, FL Technics, and Chapman Freeborn. All our speakers will give an overview of their companies and share insight into what makes them the perfect place for you to start or continue your career in aviation. You will also have the opportunity to ask your questions directly to each company during the Q&A sessions. So to start our event now, I am delighted to introduce and welcome Jonas Yanukenis, the Chief Executive Officer of Avia Solutions Group. Today, the, uh, the, the group is the world's largest ACMI capacity provider with a fleet of over 192 aircraft and a global leader in MRO, training, ground handling, and passenger and cargo services. We will hear more now from Jonas about the group's global operations today and its plans for the future. So without any further ado, I now hand over to Jonas to open our event. So Jonas, uh, over to you. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. A very warm welcome to our career expo. Uh, I will give a brief outline uh, how, how, how does the group work, where do we come from and where are we going to. I will not go into very specific details. Uh, you will have many more presentations and, and questions and answers on particular businesses we are involved. So that, that's a general overview of the group. To reiterate who we are, what we do, where we are, where we are coming from and where we are going to. So without further ado, let's start the presentation. Uh, who we are, we, we, we position ourselves as a capacity provider. We provide capacity. Only thing we don't do, we don't sell tickets. The rest we do. Uh, our main business is, uh, is uh, passenger and cargo ACMI. That's the main strategy of the group. Uh, and that's the main direction of the development. Uh, I would say throughout the years, and, and we are a really ambitious group, uh, throughout the years from 2014, 2012, we've been growing at the rate of 20% plus annually. Uh, and that's our target to do so in, 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 in quite a foreseeable future. Um, so we are ambitious organization, very fast developing organization. That's on one hand. We have quite cohesive and, uh, and clear strategy where we want to be. That's one thing. On the other hand, our group companies, as you will see, have quite a lot of independence. Uh, so under the main umbrella of Avia Solutions Group, there are lots and lots of opportunities in many particular businesses. If we look at the present setup of the business, well, as mentioned, our main business is ACMI, which is uh, basically providing capacity. Would that be to passenger airlines? Would that be to cargo? carriers, integrators, airlines. Uh, this is our main activity. Uh, historically, we were coming from quite uh, an engineering aircraft trading angle. So as part of our fleet management, we are also very actively involved in aircraft trading, aircraft spare parts trading. Mm, that's one part. Another part, very important part on our capacity provision, we do broker. We do broker a lot. Um, uh, there will be a much deeper presentation on the brokerage um, right now, especially on cargo part. I would say we are world number one, number two. Also, not just in ACMI provision, but in brokerage. That gives us good access to the market, insights of the market, um, directional insights. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's, it's a business on its own. Uh, so that's one part, capacity provision. The second part of the business uh, we broadly call them aviation support services, but those are businesses on their own as well. Um, I particularly speak about MRO, 
maintenance repair overhaul organization, which is uh, FL Techniques, the main brand, um, present not just in Europe, in many other parts of the world. Then BAA Training, that's, that's a training organization, mainly pilot training organization. Those two are, are, are quite key to our success in the capacity provision, because uh, as, as many of you uh, coming and being in aviation know that currently both pilots, training capacity, repair capacity is quite scarce. Having this capacity in-house allows us uh, to operate really efficiently our, our flying part, or our airlines part. Apart from that, we are quite active in, uh, in, in ground handling in certain particular areas. But all in all, we provide capacity. We are quite omnipresent, not just in, in Europe, Western Europe, but across the world. And also we do quite significant businesses uh, on, on, on maintenance, on trading, uh, on, on pilots. Those are quite essential parts of the overall uh, business scheme. Uh, what is important here to mention, we are also, we have um, our, our bonds uh, listed on, on Dublin Stock Exchange. Uh, our, our shareholders are both natural persons uh, as well as USA-based fund. So we have, we, have, we have really strong capital base as well. Uh, where we are present, the, the, the green dots are our physical locations, our, our physical presence within the world. As you see, most of the dots are in Europe, Western Europe. Uh, originally, we come from, from Lithuania, uh, quite, quite not a big business there. Uh, we are incorporated in Ireland, and we have several uh, headquarters or, or, or several, I would say, business centers um, throughout the world. But green dots are our physical locations. Our main part of the business is conducted both in terms of the revenue side, in terms of the physical people located, is Western Europe. That's, that's uh, business, business wise, it's circa 80% of the business. Then we are really active and actively developing in Southeast Asia. That's another part. We are present and growing in the United States, in Canada, as well as, uh, as, as have uh, development plans in Latin America. Uh, this geographical spread is, 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 is kind of based on a few things. As a CMI, that's quite seasonal business, and that's the main, the main, the main part. Like, especially in Western Europe, seasonality is very high, like 35 to 40 percent more flights, passengers are carrying, carried in the, let's call it, IATA summer, compared to IATA winter. Then for the winter part, we move capacity, we move aircraft, uh, we, we move some parts of operations to other parts of the world, which are uh, counter-seasonal. That, that's important part, and for this reason, we are spreading uh, our, our presence across the world. Uh, what else should be said? We are physically present in 68 countries. Uh, we have more than 100 offices across the world. Uh, revenue for the, for the uh, 2022 was, was close to 2 billion. As we do grow 20 to 30 percent per annum this year, we will exceed. Um, quite strongly, uh, two billion mark, and for the foreseeable future, we we plan to maintain the same trajectory of growth. So, for growth, we need few things. We need people. That's why that's why we talk. That's why we are really active in this area. Um, currently, we have close to twelve thousand people. That's about to grow significantly with the growth of the business. Uh, shortly, shortly about uh, about the history of the group. The uh, group was established in 2010 uh, on the back of uh, some some of the existing businesses. Uh, initially, those were aircraft trading, MRO, uh, pilot training activities, and and then group enlarged very fast um, to a large extent through, through the acquisitions. So. On one hand, we are a group which was formed in 2010. On the other hand, our organizations, which, which comprise the group, uh, date back to 1972 to 1976. 
uh, we keep the culture, we preserve the culture of the acquired companies. Our main task here and then the main business strategy, we don't buy businesses uh, in order to achieve any, any cost synergies. We see two big opportunities in the aviation sector. We acquire companies to grow. Most of the companies historically we did acquire grew and, and currently are like two, three times bigger than, than at the moment of acquisition. So we were acquisitive group. We will be acquisitive group. That's on one hand. On the other hand, we acquire businesses in order to grow them. We, we don't look for, for, for big cost cutting or, 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 or anything like that. In 2019, we issued bonds, uh, 300 million US dollars in, in Dublin Stock Exchange. Uh, in 2022, uh, as, as, as part of our shareholders, uh, became a U.S. fund, uh, Chartares. Uh, funds particularly uh, focused on, on, the, on the aviation, on the travel, on the leisure part. So that, that was, on one hand, strengthening of our capital base. Uh, for further development. On the other hand, that, uh, that, that also people who bring quite a lot to the table in, in terms of understanding the business, in terms of future development of the business. Uh, currently, our fleet, is, as, as Michael already said, um, comprises 192 aircraft. Um, that's definitely about to grow very significantly for the next year and for the upcoming years. Um, because to a certain extent, especially in capacity provision, supply creates demand. Um, more and more, I, I would say like in Europe, eight out of 10 uh, top, top, top airlines are using one of the other way our services, especially on capacity side. Uh, so supply creates demand in this case and uh, reliable, good quality supply, which is us. And, uh, and uh, I, can, I can say better, surely that, that we are definitely the biggest one in, in this particular uh, segment of the business. We see big growth opportunities and, and we want to grasp them. The, the most common type of the aircraft within our fleet is um, narrow bodies. Would that be a 737 family? Would that be a 320 family? From sales to 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 to, to to, 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 to boxes, to, um, to different other types within this area. As part of a portfolio we have, we do operate A330s. So kind of our portfolio is quite wide, though it's centered and it's concentrated on the, on the narrow body aircraft, but it ranged from the tiny Dorniers with 700 kilos uh, to, to 747s. But, but the bulk is in narrow borders, and that will remain in the future. Uh, speaking a few words about our development and why it's important um, uh, counter, counter seasonal areas. Uh, of course, or, originally uh, we started and, and, and we operate in, in Europe. Um, currently, we have 11 AOCs, but as part of shifting capacity to, to, to different regions, and to different geographies, we are very actively developing right now, I would say, Southeast Asian story. That's one hand. In terms of MRO, in terms of other activities, we've been there for, for, for quite a long time already, since 2015, 2016. But now we are actively developing um, our AOCs over there. We just recently received the Indonesian AOC, our, uh, my, my colleagues. Um, we'll be presenting that separately. We are targeting uh, the markets like Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Australia, because as, as is quite apparent from the map, those, uh, those areas have different or opposite seasonalities uh, to Europe or to Western Europe. Why our services are important? Because airlines can have a much lower uh, capital requirements and much higher fleet utilization. We, while shifting the fleet throughout the, throughout the globe, can also achieve high utilization and good profitability. So it's win-win for us and for the clients. Last but not least, we are also developing Brazilian AOC, 
That's also part of a story of shifting capacity across the globe. Uh, so that's that's our main business. I will not take too long. Uh, colleagues will will present those businesses and opportunities in way more detailed manner and fashion. A uh, few other words. We I would say we are heavily investing in technologies um, in software. We we have quite a lot of software created in house and then sold and marketing marketed uh, to outside clients. We are quite actively developing network of our, uh, we are not specifically focused on real estate, but for our development, it's needed. Would that be uh, office buildings? Would that be hangars? Would that be other physical infrastructure? That's, that's, that, that's part of our business, uh, being present globally. Uh, on clients, once again, most of the blue chip clients are our clients. Uh, we do quite a lot of cross-selling within the group. But once again, each business is run quite independently with its own strategy. So, and our client portfolio really demonstrates that client appreciate us, uh, that client uh, trust us, and there are ample opportunities for further growth uh, in the future. As mentioned, we did grow 20 to 30% throughout last I would say 10 last years, and we envisage and have a strategy to, to have the same growth rates in the future, which to, which significantly and a lot uh, surpass normal uh, growth levels in aviation. That's on one hand. On the other hand, area and, and uh, business of aviation, which we all love, um, has been growing, growing constantly, mainly driven by, by the middle classes, by by the emergence and strengthening of a certain uh, emerging markets, and we see this to continue in the future. Uh, last slide in my presentation on, on how we run, uh, in general, the group. As mentioned, uh, businesses have a lot of independence guided by the, by the single unified strategy. That's on one hand. We pay a lot of attention to environment, to social, to governance issues, um, we have strong and significant compliance departments. Uh, we have uh, ranging from, from compliance compliance to aviation compliance, quite homogenized and, 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 uh, and uh, I would not say strict, but, but still homogeneous procedures across the group. That's on one hand, that's the framework. On the other hand, uh, businesses are run by people in the in the in the companies. Um, so, without longer delay, I will pass the words uh, to to the businesses so that they can present the opportunities that we have, the growth that we have, and and the vision that we have for the future. Thank you. Jonas, thank you uh, so much for your presentation and really giving that overview of the group and its scope of operations and the growth that is in store, which I'm sure uh, all of our audience can see that times of growth are ahead and very exciting times for career opportunities as well. Jonas, we do have one uh, question that has come in here on special request, and it's asking about the group's stance on aviation technology and innovation but more specifically, they would like to know that, is there a future for AI in aviation and for Avia Solutions Group? Could you answer that for us? Uh, definitely, there is a future for aviation, uh, for AI in aviation. Uh, you know, it's kind of a big buzzword, uh, which, which finally and hopefully will change the world to, to, to a large extent. Um, though aviation being quite conservative industry, that will take time and a bit more time because of, of, of safety, because of regulation. But I would say it will have immense and tremendous impact on, on aviation as most of the areas of life uh, that, that, that we live in the, on our world. From dynamic pricing of, of airline ticketing uh, to, um, to maintenance. I mean, like, like in aviation and in other areas, in other technical areas, there has been talk for ages, I would say, of preventive maintenance and of, of other things. But I, I, I really sincere, I or, or we as a group, 
um, we think that finally the time might have come uh, for the for the maintenance to be way more efficient and way more preventive than it was. So ticketing, maintenance, rostering, staffing, uh, which which will lead to to significant jumps in efficiency. And of course, in our business, we also uh, look at this very, very seriously because uh, you cannot ignore the changes uh, such so big as, as artificial intelligence, though it will take still, I would say, two or three years for the, for the benefits to materialize. Well, Jonas, thank you very much for sharing insight into what AI is going to look like in the future of aviation and for the group as well. So now we're going to be hearing a little bit more about one of the group's ACMI airlines based in Indonesia. BBN Airlines Indonesia is the latest addition to Indonesia's aviation industry, providing ACMI, air charter and air freight services. The airline operates a fleet of Boeing 737-800 freighters, which it aims to increase to nine aircraft by the end of 2023, serving air freight and passenger services. Joining us now is uh, Ulysses Pascalides, uh, the ACMI Development Manager, and he will share more about the airline and its operations and the career opportunities that exist within it. So, Ulysses, over to you. Hello, Michael. Good evening from Indonesia. Um, hello to everyone. Uh, I would like to say thanks also for the opportunity to be here and share a little bit more about BBA in Indonesia. My name is Ulysses Pascalides, and I serve as an ACMI Development Manager at BBN Airlines Indonesia. Uh, through uh, this uh, brief presentation, I would like to offer you an insight into the incredible opportunities that lie ahead for uh, each of you in the world of aviation and uh, how you can play an important role in our team. Uh, to realize the, this opportunity, I will guide you through a concise overview of our organization, its functions, our strategic approach uh, to the and the unique uh, experience of living in Indonesia, which is a land with a welcoming community, embracing a rich and vibrating culture, amazing landscapes and incredible adventures. So for you to know a little bit more about uh, BBN Indonesia, we are a subsidiary of Avia Solutions Group, which is of course uh, the largest uh, ACMI provider and the leader in end-to-end uh, -end capacity solutions for airlines globally. Uh, our core mission is to cater to the diverse needs of our value clients. BBN Airlines Indonesia specializes in ACMI leasing and uh, air charter services, positioning us as a trusted partner for airlines uh, operating in the Southeast Asia to seek effective solutions for their capacity requirements. Um, our comprehensive service portfolio encompasses reliable and efficient air transportation, uh, all underpinned by an unwavering commitment to ensure customers' utmost satisfaction. In this matter, BBN Airlines Indonesia plays a key role um, in, in facilitating the growth and success of airlines in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, about the advantage of being located in the Southeast uh, Asia region, in Indonesia, Indonesia's strategic uh, geographical uh, location presents significant opportunities for the aviation industry regionally. It serves as a crucial air bridge connecting Asia and Australia while playing a pivotal role uh, as a stopover for long haul flights. Uh, the ongoing uh, resurgence of the air traffic in this area, especially following the reopening borders uh, by the Republic of China, uh, places BBN Airlines in a favorable position as the primary ACMI or charter provider. This open avenues for uh, fostering a strong business or uh, partnerships uh, uh, with airlines and establishing robust operational agreements. Uh, these factors are uh, also combined with Indonesian burgeoning economy, firmly position uh, the country as a prominent um, a strategic aviation hub in the region. Uh, about uh, our strategy, um, it would be, that the global aviation industry places a great importance on the group development and expansion, which is being catalyzed by the market's recovery post-19 uh, COVID-19. Uh, in the Southeast Asia region, uh, where the aviation market is gradually rebounding in uh, 2023, uh, 
uh, BBN Airlines Indonesia is actively involved in its uh, consolidation process. And simultaneously, the group is uh, forward thinking and has already commenced planning for network developing in 2024. Uh, one significant step into this direction is the ongoing incorporation of two additional AOCs within the region. BBN Airlines Thailand and BBN Airlines Philippines are set to become part of the BBN family by mid-2024. This uh, cost base will solidify the airline's presence in the region and enhance the efficiency of the network strategy. Regarding uh, my next slide about the, the ICMI business, uh, uh, BBN Airlines uh, um, specializes in providing uh, customized, comprehensive, and highly professional ACMI or charter solutions to passengers and cargo carriers operating in the Southeast Asia region. Our aim is to assist them in, in exploring new markets and strengthening their business operations. Uh, for cargo carriers, we leverage our fleet of Boeing 737-400s or the 800s, uh, ensuring seamless adaptation to our clients' cargo uh, capacity requirements. For the, focus, uh, for the passenger-focused carriers, uh, we extend uh, the use of our 737-800NGs, uh, meticulously configured to accommodate 189 seats, featuring brand new interiors, designs, and livery while maintaining the highest achievable levels of safety and compliance. Throughout our, throughout our partnerships agreements, we offer our clients the option uh, to maintain their distinctive livery, enhancing their visibility and brand recognition throughout the operations. Uh, our commitment, uh, uh, if I follow, I'm sorry, uh, about the, the expansion of the, um, of the uh, airline at this moment, you can see in this slide that it's been progressively prepared. Uh, as Mr. Jonas was saying at the, and Michael at the beginning, uh, the total fleet for 2023 is set to be nine airplanes uh, made of uh, six uh, airplanes for cargo and three airplanes for passengers. As I mentioned before, the development of the passenger market is uh, with the reopening borders of China and the uh, notable, not noticeable um, developing in the South Asia region has made an important uh, point out. So as you can see across the years 2024, 2025, uh, our fleet is going to be expanding in the number of passenger aircraft. And then when we reach 2026 and 2027, we're going to be incorporating white, uh, white body units so we can increase our offer and of course cover more region uh, of, of Asia and be able to provide more and more options to our clients. Um, in BBN, we have a, a, a vision and of course, um, I'm sorry, I'm having a little difficulty here. A part of the expansion also is that at, at the moment, we are having, uh, at the moment we have 16, 16 pilots in our fleet and the plan for uh, the end of 2023 is that we can have finally 64 cabin deck, uh, cabin deck crew members. And by the end of the 2024, we want to reach 110. So according to our fleet, uh, fleet expansions uh, and to developing of the business in the region, we are gonna be adding more and more crew members as well as so flight cabin crews at the moment. Uh, we are aiming to end 2023 with 96 cabin crew members, and by the end of 24, uh, 2024, the idea is to reach 160 passengers. And as, as long as the, uh, the staff uh, or, or the rest of employees in the company, by the end of 2023, we are aiming to reach a goal of 139 uh, workers in the company by recruiting new uh, uh, applicants to our offices and by the end of 2024 in order to cover every department the idea is to reach a goal of 100 and 178 passengers in uh, in our company so at the moment uh if you uh as you can see we are open into uh, two key positions in the company which are required at the moment. Uh, the first one will be a commercial manager 
and of course uh, the, the the incorporations of many many crew members uh, for the Boeing uh, for the Boeing seven three seven eight hundred NG. Our commitment as a company with a team of uh, dedicated professionals is striving for excellence and uh, aiming to become the preferred provider of ACMI services and top tier uh, charter solutions. Coupled with our expanding Boeing uh, of aircraft, uh, strategic location in Indonesia, and well-established uh, business partnership within the aviation industry in the Southeast Asia region, Vivian Airlines Indonesia is on a trajectory towards achieving remarkable success. I would also like to say, if you are planning to develop new adventures or trying to start a new career in different countries, and if you are deciding to move to Indonesia, I would like to say that Indonesia uh, as well, is known for um, Bali, stunning beaches and vibrant nightlife, but Indonesia is not only Bali. From the bustling metropolis of Jakarta with the high skyscrapers and to the serene uh, tranquility of, for example, the world famous uh, Borobudur Temple in Malagan, where you can immerse yourself in the traditional arts and culture of Indonesia, um, there's a wide range of uh, interest for everyone from uh, the nature lovers who can go uh, into the rainforest of Sumatra or the fauna lovers who can visit the Komodo Island. I will also like to point out that Indonesia, as Indonesia, I was saying before, is not only uh, Bali. Indonesia is made of 17,000 islands in total in the archipelago across three different zones. So Indonesia offers uh, countless uh, treasures and experiences that are waiting to be discovered by everyone who's willing or interested in joining BBN Indonesia. I would also like to emphasize that BBN Indonesia is not just an airline, it's a gateway uh, for a world of possibilities in the aviation industry. We invite you to consider the exciting career prospects within our team and the incredible experience of living and working in Indonesia. The opportunities are here waiting for you to seize them and I would also like to say thanks again for your attention. And we're looking forward to welcome you to our BPN family and the beautiful nation of Indonesia. So with this, I'm finished in the introduction about BPN. I'm going back to you, Michael. I know that you may have some questions. Well, Ulysses, thank you so much for your presentation and really giving us that overview of BBN Airlines Indonesia. It's definitely an exciting time from what you said for Indonesia and for the airline, and I'm sure that this will attract the top minds and talents in the industry. So now we're going to be turning to the audience. It's time for your questions. Again, if you would like to submit your questions, just go to slider.com and use the event code hashtag career expo. So we already have a number of questions being submitted here, and I'm just going to jump straight in. But if we do not ask your questions live, our team of moderators will be answering your questions directly on Slido. So pay attention to that. So to kick us off here, we have our very first uh, question here. Now, uh, Ulysses, you did mention a lot about the growth that is coming uh, within the team in terms of the staff and the flight crew and direct crew, a deck crew as well. And this question is really aimed at the culture within the company. And the question directly is, how does your company promote diversity and inclusion in the workplace? Well, thanks again for the question, uh, Michael. Uh, this is quite interesting because uh, I can answer you that question from my personal uh, uh, experience. Uh, I've been here from Indonesia for the last three months working for BBN Indonesia. And I can only say that this has been one of the most extraordinary experiences, uh, not only because of the great environment that we work here in, but also because of the warmth of the people uh, in Indonesia and also the, the capacity that they have to embrace new cultures as well. Uh, for, for me, this is a, a, a very important step in, in the developing of my career because being able to work with people uh, who has a different culture and then they have so much to offer. And, and the company, it's a, one of the, uh, the pillars uh, to have a, um, a very prepared people, doesn't matter where they come from. Uh, we have people uh, here from Lithuania, from Moldova, from Russia. I'm myself. I'm from, but actually, I'm from Venezuela, but I live in Madrid, and now I'm here in Indonesia. So the whole idea of of, of having a multicultural uh, arrangement of people it's uh, one of the priorities for the company. 
Now, just touching on that, having, having this multicultural uh, team, coming back to the growth that you forecasted that there's going to be a lot of growth within the team itself, but there's also going to be a, a lot of growth across your operations and in the fleet as well. And for that, that's going to attract, attract a lot of potential candidates. Now, on that note, what qualities and skills do you look for in candidates, especially when hiring for uh, these aviation-related roles? Well, uh, to begin with, I, I think that we are looking for uh, very enthusiastic people, people who is feeling to uh, evolve, to um, develop new skills, and also for all of them out there who are interested in the aviation, I have to say this is a wonderful world. Uh, there's always uh, so much to learn. We have to uh, constantly keep evolving. So in order to achieve that, uh, uh, people interested in, I, I would say that in any field, but in aviation, which is already a, a very fast changing uh, uh, world, we also looking for people, you know, who's really eager to know about the market, about technical skills, uh, also dedicated people who believe in trust, in honesty, transparency, and is able to work uh, as a team member in order for all of us to achieve uh, the goals that we have set for the future. We need people who's also able to uh, focus in solving uh, problems or complications and provide solutions for those uh, problems. So in, in, a whole, in the whole department, uh, this also should be um, a spread of trust so we can rely on each other. And that's one of the most important things to have transparency, honesty, and loyalty to your team members. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Now, still on this point of building trust, transparency, loyalty, you've spoken about attracting that talent from within the industry. But in a more holistic sense, uh, especially for those who are just starting out, what advice would you have for the individuals who are interested in pursuing that career in aviation if they are transitioning from another industry? Well, I, I will have to say that everyone should begin with a solid educational foundation, whether it's a degree in aviation or related field. Uh, consider obtaining certifications relevant to your chosen path. Uh, networking is key, so engage with aviation communities and industry professionals. Uh, to build relationships uh, that can open doors and gain hands-on experience throughout internships or entry-level positions to uh, uh, familiarize yourself with the industry. Prioritize, prioritize I'm sorry, uh, safety above all. Uh, and it's, um, it, safety is a cornerstone in aviation, so we should always pursue safety on the first place. So you have to be uh, persistent, committed, uh, recognizing that uh, setbacks may occur, but the thing is that we have to face them as a team and, of course, uh, come up with a solution. Uh, also develop uh, strong soft skills like communication and networking. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, and teamwork or team effort. Uh, another thing that will be really uh, good for everyone is to seek mentorship from experienced individuals in the field. And I should say that above all, maintain your passion for aviation uh, as it will drive your success and fulfillment in this dynamic industry. Fantastic. Thank you for answering that for us. And just coming to our final uh, question here and uh, speaking about opportunities now, you, you in your presentation, you spoke a lot about the growth that is forecasted uh, for the company across all its aspects. And the question that we have here, quite interesting, is that uh, someone is asking, are there opportunities for employees to work on internal uh, international projects or assignments within BBN Airlines Indonesia? What can you say for us for that? Yes, of course. Uh, as I mentioned before during the presentation, we are on the plans of expansion. So uh, we are working, uh, like I said, uh, to open an AOC in Thailand and another one in Philippines. We already have a business uh, relationship with uh, many clients across the region. So in order to uh, um, uh, re have a better reach or, or comprehension, we're going to start, of course, working uh, on international projects as well as domestic, but there will be a huge opportunity to develop and have that experience and work abroad in Indonesia. 
Fantastic. Ulysses, uh, thank you so much for your answers to this Q&A session and really painting a picture of the opportunities that exist within BBN Airlines uh, Indonesia and within its plans for the future. So now we will turn to another one of the group's airlines. Avion Express is a leading narrowbody ACMI and charter airline that grew its fleet from 16 aircraft in 2021 to 50 A320 family aircraft in 2023. Now, its clients include airline brands such as Eurowings, Transavia, TUI, Air Baltic, British Airways, Euroflyer, Air Malta, and Pegasus Airlines. It also plans to venture to new geographical regions and expand its fleet to 100 aircraft by the end of 2027. So joining us now is uh, Laura Matutkovic, the Vice President of People and Culture, and Staziza Viltrakis, the Chief Operating Officer, and they will share more about Avion Express's story and what career opportunities await you in the airline. So Laura Staziz, over to you. Hello, Michael. Thank you. Um, so... I am Laura Matsutkevich. I am Vice President People and Culture, and together with me uh, is Tessis Viltrikis. Uh, so we are here to tell you more about Avion Express, so I think we can start. Hello, everybody. I will be the first here. Uh, we'll go through some uh, slides, uh, more technical part of our company, where we are, who we are. And afterwards, I'll give a word to Laura. She will go through the uh, people and culture part. Um, uh, Avion Express, a uh, company which was established 18 years ago for ICMI operator is really a great achievement, I would call it, and we're really proud about it. And we're really long time on the market, and uh, this is a helps us as well to be known on the market. Uh, for the moment, Avion Express have a two OCs, uh, which uh, means for us that we have a two separate companies, one in uh, Malta, one in Lithuania. Of course, it's... Uh, Headquarter, we're calling it in uh, Lithuania, and supervision staff are from Lithuania. Uh, as Michael said, we have 50 or even more than 50. At the moment, we have 53 A312 to 320 Airbus family aircraft and more than 1600 uh, professionals who are helping us to work with all our customers and aircraft. So, the company really grew a lot. Uh, during the last couple of years. Um, I will go just a bit to explain what does mean ICMI because I think there are many people who not really uh, well know what does it mean. We are using this ICMI acronym, but this means what uh, aircraft, crew, maintenance and insurance. What does it mean for our customers because we mainly B2B company, uh, what we can provide them all the required services. If our customers uh, have any requests for expansion or struggling with some technical issues, see, same seasonality, Avion Express is always uh, can help them with uh, issues what we have. So it means we are ready, let's call it in a couple of days or day, just to, to come and help with the problems what our customers are facing. Uh, as per CH Aviation, Avion Express is a leading uh, narrow body ICMI provider for time being in the market. As we've been counting aircrafts, amount of aircraft, amount of uh, sectors we did, and even uh, block hours flown by us. So uh, the numbers are quite impressive. Afterwards, I will show you on the ne next slide. And we call us leading ICMI provider on the market. <laughs> but we are really proud about it. It's even coming not only from our understanding, but even from third parties. Uh, what we are operating now, we are operating uh, 51 aircraft 320 and uh, two aircraft 321s. The difference between these ones is just in the capacity of, uh, of uh, seats and the amount of passengers what we can carry. So uh, 320 can carry 180 and 320, 321, 220 uh, passengers. Uh, next slide, I'm really proud about it because this shows us uh, shows uh, for us and company growth after the pandemic period. Uh, we've been a bit bigger before pandemic, but after and during pandemic, we shrinked a lot. And uh, I'm really happy to see it, what we managed to manage all this growth with a team together, you know, starting from less than 1 million, per million uh, pack seat carried in 2021. And this year, we are planning to carry more than 5 million uh, passenger seats 
So means the growth was enormous and uh, I'm really happy to see what we are successful in that and making quite successful business. Uh, for people to understand a bit more what is our operational regions, and I would say it's not only what, what we have marked, it's a bit more, it's even sometimes takes Russia and so on before that, now it's definitely not, but before that it's, I would call uh, all the globe would be in a, in a blue, what we're calling now. Um, so this is where we are operating, and definitely it's just summer mostly operations, and in the winter we are spreading even larger. And uh, we have depicted here on a, on a slide basis for summer season 2023, uh, mostly the basis are in European region. But as we already been explaining, what we uh, have a seasonality in our business. And later on in the autumn, we're already preparing to spread our fleet between Asia, South America, Caribbean region, and even North America. So if we will be, we will be presenting a couple of months later, I would see the spread a bit more to the regions, as I said, to the Asian Americas. Um, one more slide, what we're really proud of, it's uh, customers, what we are working to bear together, let's call them partners, because we are really looking into us seriously, and we're really looking serious, seriously into a cooperation with uh, kind of major uh, carriers from Europe, and from the world. Uh, so there are customers like British Airways, like uh, Transavia, who is a part of uh, Air France, KLM Group, uh, <coughs> Eurowings, who is Luhansa Group, uh, Air Baltic. Uh, a lot of Polish airlines. A lot of Polish airlines. A lot of big uh, players on the market, well-known players on the market, and all of them, are, we are happy with our performance. We are really... And we are really proud to be the uh, partners of, of these known names. Uh, that's, that's it from my side. I will leave, give a word now to Laura. Uh, I can, okay, no problem. Okay. Yeah, so Stasis just shared uh, our history and uh, basically our achievements and results. And uh, I just would like to stop and speak a little bit more about, uh, about something which is behind all of those achievements and results. And that's obvious, it's our people. And without them, we wouldn't be able to be where we are right now. So we have uh, above 1,600 professionals in our organization. And what's really interesting that uh, we are really very multicultural and international company. So we have uh, roughly 60 nationalities. So you can imagine how diverse we are and how interesting it is to, to work at Avion Express because every day you can meet really very, very different cultures. Come on. Um, so yes, uh, just to reflect a little bit of how do we work and what is uh, how does our structure look like. So we are basically divided into three parts and uh, one of them is office personnel. We have two offices, one in Vilnius, another one in Malta. Um, so we have administration, flight operations and maintenance departments in the offices. Um, basically, we do all the job behind the scenes. We are doing all the preparation so that uh, the flights would run smoothly and uh, safe. And then we have our frontline barriers, which are cabin crew members, uh, flight crew members, non other non-flying staff like station managers and licensed engineers. And uh, they are actually already working on those flights so that they would run, sm run smooth and safe uh, already on site. Um, yes, uh, we can move on and uh, just to reflect a little bit of how it feels to work at Avion Express. Um, basically, we have three main core values and it's uh, trust, flexibility and ownership. Um, what I'm really happy about that these are not only free words, but uh, we actually live them in the organization. And flexibility, it's something, I guess the CIS will agree with me, it's something that you need daily in, in Avion Express or, or in a, any other ACMI business, because sometimes everything can change, not even in one day, but maybe in one hour or half an hour. I'm happy to say that flexibility is not, uh, let's say, only from a company side, but from employees as well. If we need something, we, we, we agree to do it, you know. That's true, yeah. Uh, it's a kind of <laughs> game of give and take, you know, here. I really liked. No choices. Okay. So, yeah, we are really working in a 
very dynamic, fast changing environment. So flexibility definitely needs to be there. Um, another uh, two, which are also very, really very important, is trust and ownership. So uh, we trust our employees. We are being reliable partner to, to our customers as well. And uh, we give lots of freedom to our employees to do their job right. And, uh, and in this way, they take the ownership of their own uh, fields of responsibility, so to say. Uh, we are also very uh, pop, very well known uh, in aviation market for, to, about the, our attitude uh, towards the employees. And we are kind of people first uh, philosophy culture company. Uh, we care a lot about the opinion and feedback from our employees. Uh, we do it constantly and periodically and in structured way, uh, way through surveys and uh, various questionnaires. So it's kind of like two-way street. We, we like to talk with our people to hear and uh, we care what they say. We analyze it and we take some action steps if it's needed. Yeah. Examples? Yes, let's move on. And uh, so basically this slide, it uh, reflects... Uh, uh, the results of our very, very recent uh, engagement survey and satisfaction survey. Uh, above 70% of our office employees are engaged and uh, above 90% are satisfied. 80% um, of uh, flight crew and 90% of cabin crew are satisfied in Avion Express. And I think these are quite impressive results and uh, it's not just simply my message you know it kind of proves that uh, we are working in quite healthy and uh, friendly environment so beside uh, happy employees happy and satisfied employees we we have really very proactive people here uh, full of energy very enthusiastic and I just would like to present you here a couple of initiatives that we have. And uh, one of them is engagement crew. Uh, so this is a group of people that are really motivated. They love what they do. And they are trying to involve uh, other people from the organization through, through various uh, engaging events uh, or, or any projects just uh, to contribute a little bit more towards a better future of the company, so to say. And then another one is uh, Avion Express Ambassadors, uh, 15 lovely ambassadors uh, whose mission is to raise brand awareness about Avion Express worldwide and just simply to tell their, their stories, uh, how is it to work for us? Uh, in one of the previous slides, uh, there was a sentence, which was, uh, uh, which is uh, the more celebrations, the better. So actually, we have that, and this uh, slide basically is just some captured movements from our events. It's not all here, but what's important here, I think, is that uh, we like to keep up to the traditions, and we have quite a few of them. And maybe even more important is that uh, we enjoy spending time with our colleagues, not only during working hours, but also also after our duty hours. Right, Stacey? Yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, growing, growing, uh, not planning to stop. And obviously we have huge hiring plans uh, for the upcoming season. Uh, we are now already hiring pilots, uh, various positions, cadets, non-type rated pilots, uh, first officers, uh, captains, and so on. Cabin crew recruitment will start really very, very soon. Um, in office, we have plenty of positions open. So uh, I think uh, I think any one of you can find uh, can find your opportunity in our organization. And what's more, even important to say is that uh, we actually call ourselves the airline of opportunities. And till this moment, only in nine months, we had uh, 300 promotions. So I truly believe that uh, any one of you can build a successful career at Avion Express. So if you liked what you heard about us, I would encourage you to scan this barcode and uh, or just visit our website and just look through our job openings. And, uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure you will find something suitable. As I said, we have plenty of open positions in case you didn't uh, you will not find it for the moment uh, don't worry we we are just entering our high recruitment season so in the upcoming months we will have uh, new job vacancies for sure so therefore i invite you to connect with us and uh, to follow us on linkedin instagram or facebook and i'm 
I really, really hope that one day I will see you somewhere in Avion Express corridors or airplane. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Laura Aziz, thank you so much for sharing that story of Avion Express. And something that Laura did say, Avion Express is growing, growing, and not planning to stop. So thank you again for sharing that. So now again, we'll be taking questions from our audience. If you'd like to submit your questions, just go to slider.com and use the event code hashtag career expo. Now, to start off with uh, our first question here, which speaks really on a lot of the aspects that both Laura and uh, Stazis spoke about. And the question is, what sets your company apart from competitors in the aviation sector? And I know you both spoke about that. So this question is open to you both. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, for a question, I will try to answer this. Uh, I would call this is, uh, our flexibility, our standards, um, always willingness to understand, to support customers and um, help our people to do these things. You know, so this is really appreciated what we see from uh, last our experience, but uh, it gives, you, gives us really big benefits when you are really taking care about uh, your business part partners, business side, about your people, it helps you afterwards to be a bit uh, different from others and, and, and to reach uh, results what you are aiming for. One more thing maybe to add is uh, I'd say that uh, the list of customers that we are working with, it kind of proves that we keep up to the high standard of services. So. Yeah, this could it's, be another thing. It's true, and we are investing into this, let's say, quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, but it gives the benefits. It's it's a bit harder for the beginning, but afterwards you see the results. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you both for sharing your insight on that. Now, uh, Laura, something that you spoke about during your part of the presentation about uh, Avion Express being a people-first airline. Now, what characteristics uh, or traits do you look for in potential candidates when uh, looking for roles in your company? Good question. Uh, without aviational background, I'd say that we are really looking into the person because for us, it's, you know, I was talking a lot about our culture, about how our people are happy with the culture. And uh, it's really important because people actually create the culture. So we are looking for someone who would fit into our organization. So, yeah, I'd say, first of all, it's attitude. Um, it's flexibility. It's something that we spoke about. Uh, so basically, the person needs to reflect our values. So this is have this ownership inside. Uh, then uh, you, you need to trust the person and the person needs to be really uh, flexible. Then... I guess due to our nature of business, um, I guess the person would need to love this fast changing environment and would need to feel, you know, like, okay, let's do that, let's do that, and let's do it fast. <laughs> Then um, what else I'm thinking? Uh, in general, we are happy people and we are we like to celebrate. You know, we, we accomplish so many things uh, daily and, and in months and so on. So, so, yeah, the person needs simply to love what they do, you know, and, and uh, come in here with, with the passion, I'd say. Thank you, Laura, for sharing that for us. And just staying on this uh, same aspect here, again, Laura, something you did mention about, which was very interesting, uh, about your ambassador program, 15 ambassadors uh, for Avion Express sharing the, the, the airline story, as well as over 300 uh, promotions that happened in this year alone. Now, this the question will be perfect for you, Laura, because the question asks that, what career growth plans are available to employees who join Avion Express? And are there any success stories that you can share? So Laura, over to you again. So I guess uh, it's only 300 success stories only this year. <laughs> and uh, for our 18 years, we would have even more. But uh, yeah, we, we like to say, you know, we are kind of company where you can grow really from junior level up to the C-level manager and so on. So uh, whatever department you would take, would it be cabin crew from junior cabin crew? You can build your career career up to senior cabin crew, then later on add some uh, uh, 
uh, functions from the office and uh, ground instructing and so on. Talking about the pilots, again, the same from cadet to first officer, from first officer to captain seat, uh, line training captain, type rating examiner. Uh, the more you grow, then the more opportunities uh, opens up. And in the office, again, you know, we can do the career either vertically to the manager's level or you can do it even horizontally. Um, I don't know, so many success stories. Actually, I am one of them. I, I came here as CEO assistant and uh, now I'm here presenting to, to the world uh, as vice president, people and culture. So definitely everything is possible because uh, we really uh, appreciate and care about our people. Laura, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Now, we're going to steal the spotlight away from you and uh, put it on Staziza for a little bit here and for our okay. final <laughs> question. And uh, the question here, Staziz, for you is that uh, how has the aviation industry uh, evolved in recent years and how is your company adapting to these changes? Okay, interesting question. Uh, I would split it maybe in uh, two parts. It's, let's call it this technical and, and our environmental and maybe another part is regarding the people you know just who, who is in a, in a company who is making a business uh, on the first part on the technical i would call definitely we are constantly monitoring what's going on in the market we are looking what kind of technologies we can implement in the, uh, making new investments would we would more uh, friendly environment wise and uh, saving a cost and so on is like implementing a new procedures for the you know SOPs for the pilots or even new engines what we are looking as well to to get with the new aircrafts what the uh, emission will be lower um, looking for some planning tools who helps as well to save some fuel to be more efficient and uh, you know reliable and another part this is uh, people what i would say pandemic period made <laughs> a big impact on that and it's you know like an airline like a company uh, who cares about people we did a lot of changes internally uh, we have some kind of, of a position where it's possible uh, work from home or distance working um, some other things adopting to their personal needs look how to attract people as well from maybe countries where they're not not from local ones uh, creating some kind of special packages for the people who is coming to us uh, looking what are the particular needs for the, each customer for, for sorry for each employee and so on I don't know this is this is how how I see it you know what what, what we did internally here in our company Fantastic. Saziz and Laura, thank you so much for your answers to uh, these Q&A questions and really telling us more about the story of Avion Express and really what's in store for those who join the Avion Express family. Now, with a fleet of 59 aircraft, Latvian, Estonian and Maltese AOCs, Smartlinks Airlines is recognized globally as a provider of ACMI, cargo and charter services to leading airlines across Europe, the United States, Asia, and Africa. It operates aircraft types such as the A320, the A321, the A330, as well as the Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft. And this is supported by a team of over 350 aviation uh, experts and technicians, along with over 1,300 professionally trained crews. Now, joining us today to share more about SmartLinks Airlines and give insight into its operations is Oleg Christovatias. He's the uh, Vice President of Production, as well as Maria Covadonga Ventanis. She is a Crew Recruitment Manager. Ian Davies is the Vice President Technical, and Dacia Stratmane is the Talent Acquisition Manager. So now I'm just going to pass over to the SmartLinks Airlines team to uh, open your presentation. So over to you. Thank you, Michael, for introduction. It's a really great opportunity to be here and uh, present SmartLinks Airlines and what we do. Uh, I think the fact that we have been in the industry for already 31 years uh, speaks for itself. And yes, our core uh, product that we offer for our clients is ACMI operations. However, we have also cargo and charter operations that we offer for our clients worldwide. Um, 
Of course, at the heart of SmartLink's success lies our greatest superpower, and those are our people. Our team comprises now already over 400 dedicated professionals from more than 70 for uh, nationalities spread across our modern offices uh, in Riga, in Malta, Vilnius, and also in Tallinn. Uh, and with this dynamic and diverse workforce, we are driven to conquer new horizons, providing excellent service and expertise to our valued clients. Yes, we dare airlines to grow smarter, um, not Harder. At SmartLink's, our standout quality is our ambition and I would like to say dedication to uh, innovation. Uh, as a testament to our excellence, we proudly hold an impressive one third share of the ACMI market in Europe. Um, we continuously push the boundaries, embracing cutting edge um, technology and pioneering world class process improvements. Uh, so if you join SmartLinks and either if you are engineer or IT specialist or flight dispatcher, we guarantee that here at SmartLinks you will have endless uh, possibilities to work with the latest software uh, available in the industry and you will have a chance to be part of very unique continuous improvement projects. Uh, I don't know if you have heard of any other ACMI operator that has uh, such unique and diverse fleet. Uh, this definitely brings us uh, very unique strategic advantages in the industry itself uh, with a lineup that includes Airbus 320, Airbus 330, uh, Airbus 320 Freighter and Boeing 737 MAX aircraft. We definitely stand uh, at the forefront of the market uh, flexibility and adaptability. And um, this diversity not only broadens our client base, but also uh, equips us to swiftly respond to um, any market conditions. And I would like to mention, and I'm not ashamed to mention that I think we are definitely uh, soaring about the competition and you see that uh, we are not stopping with 59 aircrafts, but we're going to have more and more as demand is growing. Um, at SmartLinks, we don't just uh, operate the flights. We definitely cultivate this community of uh, passionate talents who have a strong bond with the skies. Uh, this year, we covered almost every continent, flying to more than uh, 200 destinations such as Canada, Saudi Arabia, Portugal, Turkey, and uh, many more. And you can be part of more than 700 cabin crew members and more than 600 flight crew members uh, community here uh, at SmartLinks. And I would like to say that there are definitely endless career opportunities for all of you uh, if you are truly ready to taste the world with SmartLinks. And uh, from my perspective, um, if you think about next steps in your career, or maybe those are just your first steps in uh, the industry itself, uh, one thing you should definitely know that uh, why we stand out here at SmartLinks is that you will have the opportunity uh, to work shoulder to shoulder with truly the industry experts. And that's why, that's why uh, today we have invited two of our VPs uh, and the first one who I would like to introduce is um, our latest addition to the team, uh, who since joining us uh, has already made a significant mark in our technical department. So um, ladies and gentlemen, please meet our VP Technical, Mr. Ian Davis. Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome to this careers event. Uh, it's my pleasure to tell you about uh, the technical side of um, SmartLinks. Uh, SmartLinks currently has three AOCs um, in Estonia, in Latvia, and in Malta. And to support those, we have one camo effectively that supports those with 90 people who work in all disciplines from planning through to engine management, cabin facilities, um, through technical records, uh, etc. And technical 
um, management of all our work that's required in the fleet. Um, those 90 people we have in the camo are a diverse group of people from many different nations. I think this is probably the one place where I've worked where pretty much uh, we must have 10 or 15 nationalities in this particular department. I think the astonishing thing for me is I've been in this industry for 52 years. And the amazing thing for me is the average age of the people in my department is 25 years old. So they have a lot to learn and they've got some really good people to learn from. And one of the things I'm trying to do is impart my knowledge over the last 52 years to each and every one of them, because every one of them has the possibility to become a star of the future. In fact, we've actually got some stars now in the last 12 months who've risen through the ranks to managerial levels, which is really pleasing to see. However, we have a bit of a problem in the aviation sector, which is there is a worldwide shortage of engineers. And as a wise man once said, who was His Royal Highness Prince Philip, um, said, if everything you see around you, if it wasn't invented by God, it was invented by an engineer. And that's true to everything you see around you. Anything not made by God was made by one of us. So if you want to come and join a select band of engineers and technical people, then this is the place to be. You need some really, really good qualities. We'll go into those a bit later. However, the opportunities here are vast. That shortage means that we are recruiting at present. We have 15 vacancies and we will have more next year as we grow. We're growing to 70 aircraft by the end of December, and you've seen the diversity of the fleet we have, everything from long haul down to freighting, uh, freighter operations. And in each of those, we need the disciplines I've talked about. Additionally, we have our own part 145, and I'm in the process of setting up line stations across Europe and indeed on other continents. By the end of next year, we could have line stations in four continents in Asia, Europe, North America, and Africa. Um, for that, we need the best engineers to be able to come and look after our aircraft. But we've got everything from freighters, as I've said, to uh, newer generation, three-year-old 737 Maxes. So the technology variance is, is huge. And in, in wanting those people, I think we have to accept now that we're going to have to train people as well and that's where we will accept people with the uh, graduates, with the right qualifications, etc., so that we can train you in the way we work, because we will we be the best. One of the questions I heard earlier on was, are you investing in AI? Well, yes, we already are. We, we're beginning to use AI in engineering, and we're beginning to marry it with predictive maintenance now. And we're doing that with one of our partners, Lufthansa Technic, with some new software called Aviatar for predictive failure um, monitoring. We're doing that now on a daily basis. And once we link it to AI, we think this will be a groundbreaking uh, event that will put us at the head of all innovation in aviation. So the real long and short of it is, is that I'm looking for people. If you are good enough and smart enough and keen enough and are willing to work hard, then I can tell you Smart Links is the place for you alongside me and my team. And now we will hand over to uh, Oleg Krisiovatis, the VP. So Oleg, over to you. Thanks, Michael. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon to everyone. So, um, uh, as you have heard already from my colleagues, uh, SmartLinks is a company that has been providing its services for all over more than three decades uh, to the customers across the world. Uh, since 2019, we have uh, tripled the fleet and uh, added two different, uh, two additional types of, of fleet into operations: it's Airbus 330 and 737. So SmartLinks is currently the largest uh, ACMI uh, narrowbody provider in the world, and we're operating in more than 20 bases with our A320, 
family fleet, uh, 321 freighters, 330 and 737. So uh, the total, total team of uh, Smartlinks on, on the wings part is uh, we have uh, 650 pilots on board and uh, 750 cabin crews from uh, all over the, uh, the world. And we are counting around 85 nationalities uh, all across the, the world. We do operate uh, for the blue chip customers such as uh, SAS, Turkish Airlines, TUI, DHL, and many, many more. And uh, as like you know, the company, we are uh, as with the growth, we are growing amount of uh, produced hours also on year over year basis in uh, 30 to 40 percent. So this year we're going to be reaching the remarkable amount of 120,000 block hours. So. Uh, this is about the company. And of course, uh, one of the things that uh, we need to uh, remember is the, the resources that we have and the resources that we're looking uh, to uh, acquire and like, get to the company, uh, so to attract. We have, uh, apart from three OCs, we have also a proof uh, training organization, which is providing type rating courses for Airbus uh, 320 and also Boeing 737. Through the type rating programs, we're on a year, uh, yearly basis, we're bringing around 60 to 80 uh, cadets uh, down to the line. And um, uh, this year, we are um, introducing the new slogan, uh, Welcome Future Captain. So any pilot joining us as a, a first officer is uh, welcomed on their future captain uh, path. Uh, so within the company, we have quite many of examples where the pilots were going all over uh, from the being a cadet, starting uh, through our ATO organization and taking like, you know, the high level managerial positions. Um, I think like, you know, it's uh, the aviation industry and uh, the all industries around the world have been uh, uh, going through quite interesting times in terms of the talents. And uh, definitely, we are not uh, the ones which are like you know uh, aside of this. So uh, we realize that uh, we need to take some steps, you know, to overcome the global shortage of uh, pilots across the world. And therefore, we're introducing uh, different programs uh, for the uh, the talents to join the companies. So um, this year, we have launched. Uh, a program which we call like a gateway for experienced pilots uh, from the gateway from turboprop world to the jet world uh, and we're offering uh, various positions for non-type rated uh, pilots to get uh, type rating on airbus 320 or Air, uh, boeing 737 uh, being an airline um, our like you know safety comes as part of our uh, company DNA, and uh, of course like you know the we have to take care about our uh, crew members who are taking care of the uh, passengers or cargo being carried on a daily basis, and uh, the way how we operate is that you know uh, we take you from the nearest airport wherever you are, uh, bring you to the to the base, like you know, at our expenses, provide you with accommodation at our expenses, and then uh, take you back home, like you know, uh, after this uh, rotation, after your advantage, ad adventure. Uh, so, um, becoming and being the largest ACMI airline uh, is a result of hard work of all the team. It's both the team on the ground and also the wings team. So, um, therefore, like you know, I would like to encourage that. Uh, those of you guys who have are not yet you have your head in the clouds would uh, come and join us like you no know, because we're i'd say a very nice bunch of people we're uh, very kind towards our colleagues and uh, definitely uh, you will like it like and we're offering you an adventure of a lifetime and uh, looking forward to to getting you on board and uh, seeing you either in the office or like you know, at the base and uh, uh, looking forward to seeing you being a part of the family. So, like, get your head in the clouds and join Smartlinks. 
to the SmartLinks team, Oleg, thank you so much for sharing that story and insight and overview of uh, SmartLinks Airlines. And to those who would like to get their heads uh, in the clouds, something that uh, Oleg did mention is that welcome to all future captains, first officers, and to expand on that, engineers, rising stars, and all members that will join SmartLinks Airlines. So again, we'll be taking questions uh, right now. Just go to slider.com and use the event code hashtag career expo. So for our first question here, I'm going to introduce uh, Maria uh, Kodavonga, and she'll be taking this first question, expanding on something that, uh, that uh, Ian did mention about rising stars and the opportunities that they have to elevate within uh, SmartLinks. Uh, the question we have here is what career opportunities are available for recent graduates in your company? So Maria, over to you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much for joining all of you today here. So, well, basically, if you're looking to start your aviation career, either up with your head in the cloud or um, on ground, for sure you have found the, the, first, the perfect place for, uh, with us in Smiling. So if you are looking to start your career as a flying crew, for example, through our ATO, you will have the opportunity not only to join the Smarlings, but to build a career with us, which is the most important thing because we are not looking just for FOs or for cadets. As my colleagues mentioned, uh, previously mentioned, we are looking for future captains. We are looking for those stars that will lead the future of our company. And uh, if we are talking about office staff, best thing you can do is please go to our career site, monitor our vacancies because we are constantly updating it and you can find your future there with us for sure. Thank you, Michael. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Maria, for expanding on that for us. And maybe, Dase, you can uh, add more to that with this next question, which asks, what types of internships uh, or, or co-op programs does SmartLinks Airlines offer for students pursuing aviation careers? Would you like to take that one, Dase? Definitely, Michael. We have quite amazing internship examples that we had here uh, at SmartLinks. Uh, for example, I can share that uh, we this year we gathered uh, interns, 10 interns who worked in technical department uh, in a technical records team, uh, and they had definitely a hands-on experience within aircraft records and data and i think they already get got the first impression what it's all about and i would like to also mention that some of those interns already have landed their first entry level position uh, here at smartlinks Fantastic. Thank you, Dase, for sharing that with us. Now, you've all shared a very powerful message about the opportunities that are available across SmartLinks Airlines and its operations. And I'm going to give Oleg a chance to uh, bring this all together by answering this question, which asks, what career growth paths are available to, to employees who join SmartLinks Airlines? And can you share any success stories? Yeah, hey, Michael, thanks a lot for the question. Uh, definitely, we have a lot of uh, success stories to share. We have a vast number of rock stars and superstars in the company. And um, one that comes to my mind is a good colleague of mine who is currently uh, took a role of uh, crew training director. We have both started with him uh, working in SmartLinks operations many, many years ago. And uh, since that time, I have seen him uh, going and taking the uh, pilot career and uh, doing his first solo flight. Uh, since that, like you know, time, uh, Dmitris has uh, completed his uh, first officer program, being upgraded to a captain, then line training captain, type rating, type rating instructor. Then he took a role in uh, a nominate post holder flight operations for one of our AOCs and currently took over the position of crew training director, ensuring and strengthening the training standards all over the organization. So uh, this is just one of the examples. Uh, how you can build your career. So uh, wherever you join in the company, be it in a ground team or in the wings team, you have all the doors open and there is always a possibility for you to grow with us. Fantastic. Thank you, Oleg, for, for sharing that with us. Now, a very common uh, term we've heard today in the SmartLinks Airlines presentation and in your answers is the opportunity for rising stars and people to really come up 
within the airline. Now, Ian, I'm going to come back to something that you mentioned about mentorship and having that opportunity to nurture young people who join our SmartLinks Airlines into either a managerial positions or getting their heads in the clouds or on the ground. And the question that we have now is what advice do you have for individuals interested in pursuing a career in aviation, especially for those who are just starting out? So Ian, over to you with this question. So the advice I give to everybody who wants to get into aviation is that this is the greatest business on earth. There are not many people who have the ability to keep aircraft in the region of seven, 70 to 200 tons uh, flying. And that requires special individuals. And to do so, you need certain qualities. And what I'm going to do now is in a short a uh, parody on a poem I know is give you what you will need if you want to succeed in aviation. And it's a parody on a poem by a guy called Rudyard Kipling. And he wrote a poem called If. So here's the aviation if. If you are talented and don't mind hard work. If you can think out of your comfort zone. If you are a true team player. If you'll go the extra mile to get the job done. If you can keep your head when all those around you are losing theirs. If you can multitask and do difficult things in difficult situations. If you are willing to learn from the best. If you can do all these things, then you belong at SmartWings. Ian, thank you so much for sharing such a powerful message uh, and a message to all our audience watching about the opportunities that are there uh, at SmartLinks Airlines. And Maria, I'm going to direct the last question to you to help bring this all together. And the question is, why should people be excited about joining SmartLinks Airlines and what can people expect? Thank you, Michael, very much. Uh, so... My main point here is why would you choose flying only for one company if you can experience the magic of the ICMI, so experience the whole world of aviation and make your life out of it for the rest of your career. So uh, the best thing that uh, we have here in SmileLinks, as my colleagues were mentioning before, is not only uh, the possibility of learning and being mentored by the best uh, experience Expert, sorry, experts in the in the aviation field, but also to be surrounded by amazing individuals and just make your career and build it with us. Fantastic. Thank you, Maria, for sharing that. And Oleg, Maria, Dase, and Ian, thank you so much for your answers to this Q&A session and really covering extensively the airline's operation and sharing that powerful message of what people can expect within the culture and future of SmartLinks Airlines. And the only thing left to say is welcome to future first officers, cadets, captains, engineers, rising stars, and any member that joins SmartLinks Airlines. Now, a key component in the successful daily operation of an aircraft or airline is the maintenance performed by both base and line maintenance organizations. FL Technics is an independent group providing full scope aircraft maintenance, repair, and overhaul services with a team of over 2,000 professionals based across its base and line maintenance network. Now, with over two decades of experience, the company has offices in Lithuania, Indonesia, and Thailand, including hangars and shop facilities in Lithuania, Indonesia, and the United Kingdom, as well as an extensive network of line maintenance support stations across Europe, Africa, the Asia Pacific, and Canada. Joining us now is uh, Edita Yakuchonite Lukše, the head of HR, and Karolis Stadkus, the deputy CEO for line maintenance, and they will give a deep dive into the world of MRO and FL Technics global operations and the next steps that you can take for your career across their MRO network. So, Edith and Carolus, over to you. Thank you, Michael. Evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for listening to us. It's a bit uh, late already time. So welcome to our world, to MRO world, which is quite a little bit different from aviation side. I am Edita. I'm leading people and culture agenda in this global FL Techniques group. And uh, I have to admit, I truly enjoy my journey in this company and uh, opportunity to be 
be the um, to enable and support the growth of this organization, which is, I believe, is very very important uh, when you are in people and culture part. So, who are we at FL Techniques? Uh, we have a slogan: uh, Join us, and the rest is flight. And actually, this one it embodies all the spirit what each of one in this organization do do have. We really, uh, we really recognize what our greatest assets uh, lies in people, and they are core of our success. Therefore, their happiness, well-being, uh, satisfaction in job, uh, this is what makes us successful, and this is what makes us grow. And um, I truly believe that. Uh, if you are enjoying what you are doing and uh, if your job is your, let's assume, a hobby, this is the, 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 the time where you can be the most successful and you can achieve everything you want. So I uh, truly welcome the ones who are passionate in aviation and in engineering. We are really quite, I would say, the best place to work. <laughs> So I'll jump quickly in an overview of L Techniques, who are we? As Michael mentioned, we are 2,000 plus professionals working worldwide, having many facilities and a lot of interesting projects across the world, in Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia Pacific, and even North America, like Canada. We have global memberships, which allows us to operate in, in this uh, Areas and we also have many quality certificates needed for uh, for our operations, same as local approvals in Aruba, Bermuda, Indonesia, Thailand, and more. You can find them all in our uh, website. And uh, one of the most important, which I'm really proud of to tell you, just recently we were awarded with top employer certificate which is a very, I would say, tangible milestone in our journey to if our very ambitious vision to be the first choice for people, partners, and society. Um, it's not a just, you know, some fancy keyword. It's an official recognition of our existing people management policies and practices to comply the highest standard and to, to be... Um, to be in the in the position of the best employers acknowledged in the world, so really proud about this. But of course, this is not the end stated uh, thing. It's a the certification means that it's a continuous and very dedicated commitment that we have to be the best because uh, life is changing and each year brings new challenges. So we are on that journey. And I will most probably hand over, hand over uh, word to Carolis, who will lead us deeper in our uh, deep dive in our technical and uh, activities. Okay, everyone, let's try to liven this up a little bit. Now the fun part is here. And I've been listening to our company's airline company's presentation before. Everybody talks about nice birds flying in the sky, but they forgot to mention one most important thing. They're not flying without our signature. So being an MRO, which means maintenance repair organization for these people who don't know what this means, it means that we are in charge to make sure that these planes do lift off in the first place. So having said that, we do a lot of stuff related to this to make sure that the aircraft is flying and it is able to fly. So first and foremost, we do maintenance, which means that we do base maintenance, which is hangar maintenance. This is the maintenance that comes once in, let's say, two years, approximately when the aircraft needs to do, to do big maintenance and it has to be stripped down, down to the fuselage. We also do line maintenance, which is maintenance that you do in between the flights. When the passengers get out, our boys come in and do the maintenance to make sure that the flight happens. This is where I come from. So this is the best area of MRO, if you ask me. Then we have a huge section of parts uh, supply, which means we have a huge supply chain and we have a huge team of people who provide spare parts and consumables for the airlines and the MROs to make sure that this action can happen. We have aircraft engineering services, which is the 
office part uh, to make sure that all the maintenance programs are maintained and everything is in order. We have design uh, and production facilities as well. So all the fancy stickers that you see on the front of your seat when you sit in the aircraft, we can do them as well. We also have technical trainings. That's for uh, engineers mainly, uh, where all the organizations, whether it's uh, MROs, other MROs, our competitors or airline inside departments who have engineers and they need training, this is what our guys can provide as well. Um, several years ago, we've started logistics solutions. Uh, that's a logistics business specializing in the moving of uh, very expensive and uh, delicate aircraft parts, such as engines. And uh, we have global reach and try to specialize more in this. We also recently get uh, got into wheels and brakes business. Uh, this is something that everybody heard about before, but never wanted to try. Now we tried, and this year has been absolutely fantastic. I will show you in the next slide how we are doing. And finally, we have an engine repair shop, which is not a huge repair shop for massive strip downs, but it's like on the go repair shop for uh, quick turnarounds uh, to make sure that the aircraft engines are in good conditions. Now, this is my best slide and I like it most because it represents who we are truly. And as you can see, we are global. So if you take North America, if you take Europe, Middle East, Asia, we are basically everywhere. Uh, we have about 70 plus line stations all over the world. Line station is the place where I said in between the stops of an aircraft. We also have a lot of hangars operating. Uh, mainly we have two hangars right now in uh, Lithuania. We have a hangar in Indonesia. We have a hangar in UK. And we have signed recently several deals where we will be building new hangars and expanding our global reach in some fancy looking locations, namely Bali with, you know, white sandy beaches in Dominican Republic and in Algiers, which is on the north side of Africa. So this map is a good representation that we are everywhere. Uh, it's not a secret that our management is telling us to make sure there are more dots on the map. So this is where you, all you beautiful people come in. We need more team members who are willing to help us do that. Obviously, this comes with many, many opportunities. So, you know, if you prefer cold, we have opportunities in Norway. If you prefer beaches, as I told you, Bali is coming. So, you know, keep an eye out on all of the available positions. Now, a little bit of statistics. I will not get much into details. Probably you can find it all online. But basically, our section, our industry directly relates to the whole aviation industry, how it succeeds, how it grows, because the more aircraft come into the market, the more maintenance providers are needed such as us. So all the future is looking very bright, sometimes probably even too bright because even manufacturers cannot keep up with the demand. So whenever this goes up, our services also go up in demand as well. That's why we also look for people who want to assist us on this journey. Now, to give you a brief understanding on the open positions that we currently have, these are the rough estimate numbers. And... Uh, Punta Cana itself, one of the new locations for the hangar, it's going to be 300 plus open positions. Bali hangar will be 250 plus open positions. Uh, colleagues within line maintenance, which is again my area, we're looking for about 100 people plus. This is basically on this year's review alone. So if you take five years in the future, these figures will multiply. And the same goes for base maintenance existing facilities that are already operating. So we need a lot of people as well. So as you can imagine, all of these opportunities, all of these locations, we have a lot of open positions and they're not purely just for technical people. Yes, we need a lot of engineers. Yes, we need a lot of mechanics. We need a lot of boroscope inspectors, NDT people. We need specialized people, but they perform the job. We also need people who help to organize the job. So all the office positions that go with these, they are open as well. We will need a lot of supporting positions in the logistics chain. We will need people, you know, selling the services. We will need customer support people. Whatever it is that you do, and I presume that some of the listeners are not from aviation, trust me, there is a lot of things to do in aviation if you have the willingness to learn new things and you're not afraid to make some mistakes. We all make mistakes, but you know, the industry, once you get into it, you cannot get out because it's really exciting. And trust me, I'm talking from experience. I've entered this. 10 years ago, <clears throat> I still can't get out. <laughs> I'm not sure that I want to. <laughs> okay. Um, vision, mission, values. Now, that's an interesting part, guys, because 
This summer, we had a massive event, which was organized by our management for all our group companies. We have gathered all the people from all corners of the world. And we had a little session, which took basically one day, full day, when we tried to understand what do we do? What are we? Why are we doing things? You know, what are our priorities? How do we differ from everyone else? So after all of this session, which has been, you know, on, on repeat, because we couldn't finalize it very quickly, we came down to the vision, which is to be number one choice for people, for partners and society. Obviously, it means that we try to be responsible in front of all of these. We try to be the best employer for people. That's why Edita mentioned we got the award as the top employer in, in our country. Uh, mission is to be shaping the safer aviation world, which we think is important because we all fly aircraft. And uh, the last thing we want is for it to be unsafe. So safety is always our priority. And values is uh, something that drives us who we are, you know, how do we see ourselves and how do we try to, to show to people who we are, you know, what are our core values. So ambition, progress, teamwork and competence. This is something we go day by day doing um, everyday life. Now, working at the FL Techniques, beauty of MRO, as I told you before, we are the core people who ensure that the aircraft are flying. Global exposure, it means that we are literally everywhere. Every single continent probably is covered by our uh, activities, except probably Antarctica, but that's a challenge we're willing to accept. Aviation industry, uh, it's a very good industry. It's a very wide industry. A lot of positions are available. A lot of opportunities are available. And at the same time, it's very small. So if you do something good on one side of the world, other side of the world hears about you already. So opportunities come up very fast. Trust me. Even our group companies want to talk to you. And this is, <laughs> this is an internal competition which is happening as well. And grow to glow. We understand that without investment into people, into who they are, into how good they can become, we're not going to get there. So we understand that and we're ready to commit to doing that. This is a glimpse uh, of our customer base. So all the biggest players from the airlines, we work with them. All the biggest uh, leasing companies providing aircraft for the airlines, we work with them. And there's many, many more. We just couldn't fit them all into one slide because we really wanted to put that nice aircraft in there as well. So we are well known, we are global and we are everywhere. Join the best guys and trust me, we are the best. Uh, well, you know, we were nobody some time ago. Now we are a big pain in the for some competitors and this is what we like. It means we're doing a good job. Michael, I think back over to you. Yes, thank you so much, Carolus and Aditza, for really delivering a very lively uh, presentation and insight into the world of MRO and this overview of FR Technics base and line maintenance operations around the world, both for the dots that are currently on the map and the future dots that will appear. This obviously does spark a lot of interest in the company for those seeking to join. And as we all know, join FR Technics and the rest is flight. So this transitions very nicely into our Q&A session uh, where we'll be taking questions again. Just go to slider.com and use the event code hashtag Korea Expo. So for our first question here, again, which I will pose to both of you uh, on the panel, what sets FR Technics apart from competitors in the aviation sector and in MRO? Okay, I'll take this one, Michael. Um, as I briefly mentioned before, if you take roughly a decade uh, back, uh, we were, uh, you know, not tiny, but we were a small, uh, very unknown company for the big players around the world. Now, fast forward to today. We are talking one decade and we have become a huge, huge operator. We are all over the place. We are in all continents. We are growing like crazy and we don't plan to stop. So I think this very well describes who we are, our hunger, our eagerness, our willingness to do more, to expand more and to be probably the well-known best provider in the world. I think this is the aim. This is what we're trying to do. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Carolus. Now, I'm going to come to uh, Editha here and uh, maybe expanding as well on what Carolus spoke about. Editha, could you uh, answer this question for us, which is, could you describe uh, FR Technics' approach to employee development and training programs? Again, for Editha, but I'll open it to the both of you. <laughs> sure. You know, even Carolus mentioned, we have in our employer value proposition to our employees uh, saying, grow to glow which is, I think, reflecting everything. Um, 
aviation is the industry where you are on continuous learning journey. You cannot stop. You need to recertify. You need to get another type. You need to learn how to lead. You need to do a lot of things. So we are really uh, nurturing and supporting very different, very vast activities in learning, starting pro- from professional uh, journeys and most probably ending in leadership journeys with different programs, with uh, different training types. Some of them require, you know, online, in class, online, maybe one-on-one mentoring and other activities. So grow to glow. Just join us. <laughs> Thank you, Edita, for sharing that with us. Now, for our next question here, um, just reminiscing on something that Carolus mentioned about uh, the map and all the dots that are on the map, whether people like to enjoy the uh, warm weather or or, or sunny beaches or they enjoy the cold. But uh, what qualities uh, are you or skills are you looking for in candidates when hiring for these roles? So I'll open this to Carolus, but uh, Edita, you're also free to answer. Uh, I will probably start, Michael. Um... You can probably imagine, and I think it has been reflected by previous companies of our group as well, eagerness from people to learn, you know, not being afraid to try things, committing, you know, trying your best. Even if you don't succeed, even if you make a mistake, that's fine. That's okay, because if you don't make mistakes, it means you're not doing a job. So we understand that. And uh, I think it's inevitable that people go through this. But if people are willing to give up after the first try, if people get scared, you know, after the first try and they don't want to try to do it again, I think this can be a little bit of an issue. So aviation, it was, you know, a pioneer industry when, you know, first brother right started flying. <laughs> I think it's still the same mentality even today. It hasn't changed much. You have to have that in you to go try, you know, to see if you can make that happen. What Carol is trying to say, you know, it really reflects our values. We are very ambitious. And we have high ambitions to be the best to grow. Uh, of course, we have miscellaneous people with miscellaneous, let's say, skills and, and, and attitude. I mean, attitude should be, I should reflect our values, but generally, uh, ambitious people, they really find a good place in our company as they drive the progress. And we really into that path where it's now. So... Fantastic. Thank you, uh, Edita, Carolus, for sharing that. And just coming to our last question here, which again expands on what you've spoken about, but really brings it all together. And the question here is, what career uh, and growth paths are available to employees uh, who join FL Technics? And can you share any success stories? There's one phrase that I like best, and I think it's all over the place in aviation. Sky is the limit. It means they're endless. Seriously, you start in a junior position, you can go up to the very top if you have the guts and if you have the knowledge and, you know, you're willing to travel that journey. Good examples. We have many good examples when people started, you know, in one certain department and they ended up being some daughter companies, you know, CEO, for example. You know, we have many horizontal movements, as Avion colleagues mentioned as well. We have vertical movements as well, plus all these new locations that I mentioned in the map, you know, these dots in the map that are appearing, you cannot build the whole location with absolutely new people. You still need to mix them up with your people, with experienced people who already know how the job is done, which means opportunities. So if somebody's sitting, you know, in Lithuania and thinks it would be nice, you know, to stretch their legs in the Bali beach, I mind you, you know, these opportunities are on the table. So, you know, pick a choice, you know, drop a dart onto the map, see where it lands and off you go. (laughs) And what Carol has mentioned, what is very important to emphasize, we are a big company and we have more than 300 different professions. Yeah, so meaning if you are not happy being in line maintenance or in base maintenance, you can go for engineering. Or if you want to convert yourself from, uh, as for example, IT specialist to some aviation specialist, you are also welcome. I mean, we have really, really a lot of opportunities. So, welcome. <laughs> we are the best. Fantastic. Thank you, uh, Edita and Carolis, uh, for your answers to the Q&A session, really giving us that clearer picture on the world of MRO and the spectrum of opportunities available to those that join FR Technics. Just to repeat your words, the sky is the limit, and for those who join, the rest is flight. 
Now, training plays such a critical role in the field of aviation by ensuring safety, efficiency, and competence across all aspects of the industry. With bases in Spain, France, Lithuania, India, and Vietnam, BA training is recognized globally as one of Europe's leading independent aviation training centers. BA training offers a full scope of aviation training solutions to individuals and companies worldwide, from pilot training to ground handling courses. Joining us now to speak more on the company uh, its, and its global operations and plans for the future is Marius Revoitsev, the Chief Executive Officer, and Ligitsa Stravinskas, the Senior Talent Acquisition Partner. So please meet your speakers and Marius, over to you. Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. And uh, I'm happy to attend this event today and uh, have a chance to present BE training. And I hope that uh, my speech about our organization will trigger, trigger at least some one of you to think about joining our company and building a success together. Any idea what it takes to earn wings? No, it's not about falling in love, except if the love is for aviation. All speakers today are from aviation industry, but I would like to highlight the things on what aviation stands for. Aviation stands on two main things. One is aircraft, and the second most important part is flight crew. I'm talking about pilots and cabin crew training. Today, aviation industry is booming and growing significantly, and in the same time, there is, there is a record in a pilot shortage. And here you can see that over the next 10 years, almost 300,000 new pilots will be needed in a market. And this is where BE training steps in. Almost 20 years of experience in pilot training and aviation personnel. So what do we do? What type of business BEA training is doing? If you would like to become a pilot, BEA training is the place to do that. Uh, we prepare pilots from zero to hero. In two years, you can become a pilot. We also work with an experienced pilot training, and we also provide training for the rest of aviation personnel, like cabin crew training or flight dispatcher training. Here is a snapshot uh, of our presence globally. Where do we operate and where do we have an offices? So our headquarters is in Vilnius, Lithuania, but we operate in seven different countries so far. Uh, from the training centers where we do the pilot training, we have it in Lithuania, Spain, France, Vietnam. Recently, just one month ago, we opened a consultancy center in New Delhi in India, <clears throat> another one in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, is ready to come. More, we have a sales and representative office in Dubai. We have 19 simulator training devices worldwide on which we do the training for pilots, and we own seven different brands in aviation training industry. Of course, all the growth would be impossible without a professional team. So today we unite more than 230 professional employees and they are from 30 different countries or 30 different nationalities. And not only different culture, international office we have and operations, but we also work with uh, different international clients. And today we serve clients from more than 90 different countries. Here you can see the growth of BE training, the organization which is uh, very ambitious. Uh, we are growing very fast at a, guys, at a high speed. So five years ago, we used to be one training center with one office in Lithuania. Today, we have four different locations in Europe and in Asia. We used to have two devices on which we were training the pilots. This year, we will finish with 19. So that's a significant growth. And of course, we are growing in a, in a number of people that contributes and supports us uh, to achieve the goals and to be successful in growth. So as you can see, the upcoming several years will be very interesting, and we are planning to almost double the number of employees. So every day we have an open positions, and open positions is from almost each department at BEA training. If you look for a corporate perspective from an office, so that's management, uh, marketing, IT, people department, finance department. If you would like to, to be more on hands-on in aviation, so there is an uh, aviation training, operations, infrastructure, engineering. 
So we're looking every day for people to join BEA training and to, to build a success story together. I would like maybe to highlight uh, four main things that I'm confident that BEA training can bring and provide an offer to people. That's rewarding and compensation benefits, career growth, uh, as well opportunities for the professional development, and of course, uh, positive culture and environment to work. When we go into rewarding compensation and benefits, uh, based on a market recent researches, uh, what it shows that we are offering a competitive salaries. Together with the competitive salaries, we are providing the health insurance package. And in order to be healthy and to be active, uh, we also provide an access to the sports club. And moreover, what is more important is uh, we have using a mental gym application. Of course, uh, there is other benefits like additional paid holidays for the seniority, birthday or wellnesses. And if you have a family, you have kids. So, so far, only in Lithuania, but we're looking to open it in other locations, uh, childcare services. And there is an option to work remotely, but it depends on the position and it should be followed by the company policy. BE training, as you understood, is an international company. So every day we work with international projects, with international products. So you are working in uh, international culture. You can uh, broaden your outlook to explore the culture differences. Uh, there is an opportunity to handle few projects in a safe time and that requires to show and to develop uh, the leadership, ownership, responsibility. I think there is a, enough space for creativity and to share the open ideas. The team of BE training professionals, I would say, is a young team. Uh, nevertheless, it's very professional. And the high qualified managers are always ready to be as a mentor, to take you and to guide you through all your journey at BE training. What is important from the personal development is uh, that every year we have an allocated budget for soft and hard skills development when it comes to the professional development. Uh, there is an opportunity for some roles to work in one of the, our offices worldwide. And of course, in some roles, there is a constant business trips worldwide. Career. Uh, out of 100 available positions, uh, 29 of them were filled by internally promoted employees. So it means roughly around 30% uh, of the positions is internal promotion. And there are two options, what we treat as a promotion. One is vertical, another one is horizontal career progression. Here you can see an example of our nice colleague uh, that is originally from India, working in Lithuania today in our team from accountant to the training project manager. So uh, hard work, dedication, and passion, that what uh, led her to change, to make a change in her career. Another one nice example is about uh, Augusta, uh, who is working for, for several years with BEA. From the training manager to the customer support director, that was one promotion. And we already jumped into the second promotion to the head of administration. So that shows about a vertical career progression. One more career opportunity that was uh, the goal was achieved and made, that's on the higher C-level position. So the guy, Vito Tasiankauskas, who born and grew up in Lithuania, so he started his journey in a sales commercial department, continued as a business development manager based in Lithuania, Later in a several years, he moved to Vietnam to run BE Training Vietnam Training Center, and now he treats it as a second home. By these examples, I want to, to show that there is a plenty of opportunities, just you need to take it. And maybe coming to the fourth value that uh, I think BE Training is bringing to employees, positive culture and work environment. So we are working in a modern office. Uh, we work hard, but we celebrate hard as well. So we have uh, quarterly team building events. We have cross department quarterly team buildings. There are at least two events that company organizes uh, during the year. Some of them are 
from for the global employees i mean people are coming to one place to celebrate the goals that are achieved we have value ambassadors appointing every quarter so that shows that we really care about people so business is business but uh, without having the smart proper intelligent people i don't think think bea could achieve where we are right now and i believe that people is the the most important part for BE training growth. So please join BE training. And I hope what I said uh, in the beginning of the presentation, that at least I triggered someone of you to show an interest or to send to ask questions about open positions at BE training. Well, Marius, thank you so much for sharing that vivid story and overview of BA training, as well as the exciting opportunities that you mentioned are just waiting to be taken. I'm sure there are members of our audience who will be triggered to explore them. So again, uh, we'll be taking questions. Just go to slider.com and use the event code hashtag career expo. So for our first question now, uh, Marius, which I will direct to you, uh, it speaks more on exactly what you were, what you were speaking about, but maybe you can expand on it. And the question is, what makes BAA training uh, stand out as a unique employer of choice in the aviation industry? Yeah, that's a good question. And maybe I would like to come back to the initial stage of my presentation where I highlighted that aviation stands on two things, aircraft and flight crew. That's a, with all the respect to all the businesses in aviation, that's the most important part. Without pilots and cabin crew, aircraft will not fly. So the unique is that you can touch and you can be in that part of the industry and you can make a decisions here. So that's the unique innovation. Fantastic. Thank you so much for expanding on that for us. I'll also take this time to uh, introduce Ligitas uh, Stravinskis, our second speaker as well. And uh, as part of this question, the question in particular is what qualities and skills are you looking for uh, in potential candidates? Again, this is open to the both of you, but Ligitas, feel free to start with this question. Good evening, everyone. Pleasure to be around and I'm happy to present the BA company. So thank you, Marius, for such a nice presentation on BA training. Um, talking about um, candidates you know, and skills, um, these days, labor market is pretty competitive, you know, so it's quite hard to be um, picky as a company because tables has turned, you know, since since the COVID hit um, the world, basically. So, so we kind of have moved from, you know, picking the candidates uh, to, with the certain skills, you know, and we decided, you know, to look for personalities. Uh, and this is what we're seeking for, because we believe each candidate has something unique, some unique traits, you know, that can bring to the company. Uh, and that helps, you know, us uh, to flourish in various and most importantly, unique uh, colors. Um, so I would say personality is is the must um, at BA training, you know. Uh, talking about more technical skills, I would say, because uh, as Marius was saying about the ambition of the company, which is one of the core values um, that we have, um, I think initiative and creativeness is 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 the key, you know, to, to drive this business uh, and to be such an ambition ambitious uh, company. So. Fantastic. Thank you, uh, Legitas, for sharing that with us. Now, uh, a question here that I'd like to uh, direct to both you, Marius, and Legitas as well. And it's asking about uh, any upcoming projects or initiatives that candidates might find exciting. Could you expand on that for us? Yeah, sure. Uh, projects is uh, what BE training lives with. So uh, projects are coming every week, every month, I would say. So we just, uh, from the initial idea to open uh, our consultancy center in India, it took us five months to, to do that. Uh, right now we're working on a project in Brazil. So that's the one that uh, people can contribute because a lot of involvement from the different departments is needed. Uh, another one project that is uh, the unique in the market, we will be launching in several months uh, pilot training uh, finance program and will provide a finance solution for uh, 200 pilots per year. So that's very unique in the market and many different roles available for this project. So that's, I could name a name, but I think that uh, coming to BE training, you will not be bored and you will really have a chance to contribute to many different projects worldwide. 
Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that, Maris. And maybe just coming to uh, our last question here, which, Maris, it speaks on something that you spoke about, be it uh, either horizontal progression or career or vertical progression within the companies. And in particular, this question that we have is asking that are there any opportunities for employees to work with international uh, projects within BAA training? So, Marius, over to you. So, we operate and daily activities are within seven different countries worldwide right now. What does it mean that every day you can contribute to international projects? Every day you are in international environment, so everything is related. So having offices in different countries, you are already an international one. So there is no any day where you would be the local one. Fantastic. Marius Agitas, thank you so much for your answers to this Q&A session and really giving us a deep insight into the world of training in the aviation industry and the role that BAA plays in equipping professionals with principles in safety, efficiency and competence. Now, in the air cargo and air freight industry, Chapman Freeborn combines over 50 years of experience delivering global coverage and meeting the air charter and aviation support requirements of customers 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The company's diverse uh, client base includes major corporations, governments, non-government organizations, and relief agencies, as well as high net worth individuals and prominent figures from the entertainment world. Joining us now to speak more on Chapman Freeborn's global operations and career opportunities within the group is Sarah Petra. She is the head of HR, as well as Neil Dursley, the chief commercial officer. So Sarah and Neil, over to you. Thank you very much, Michael. And uh, greetings to everybody. Um, really nice to be part of this, uh, this session. Um, this is Chapman Freeborn's 50th anniversary year and uh, it's uh, it's been an incredible year and just want to run you through a brief overview of some of our key products and some of the key differentiators of our organization so who are we so Chapman Freeborn is a world leading charter broker company I'm speaking to you from our global headquarters in London Gatwick Airport. And our company was acquired by Avia Solutions Group in 2019. Prior to the acquisition, the company did diversify and acquire additional companies, including Intratco Global, which is a world leaving, leading um, livestock uh, company. So we fly livestock around the world, you know, um, and this is everything from racehorses to endangered animals where we repopulate Africa with white rhinoceros, for example. And it's a, a fantastic team flying these uh, livestock around the world located in Canada, in London, and in Dubai currently with good expansion plans. Then we have Magma Aviation, company acquired in 2017, operating five 747 freighter aircraft on a global scale, including Asia Pacific, where we operate from Hong Kong and Singapore, and 12 flights per week into North America on the transatlantic route from Germany and from Liège in Belgium, and also southbound to Africa, including Johannesburg and northbound back to Nairobi. We then have Arcus Air Logistics, a company that we acquired in 2020 during the pandemic, and we acquired it with the backing and funding of our parent group, and uh, you know, Arcus Air Logistics is a world leading automotive uh, solutions provider operating two Dornier 228 aircraft um, throughout Europe, supporting direct OEMs as well as tier one automotive suppliers. 
with their production lines 24-7, 365. And then our onboard courier team, OBC, globally located in strategic locations, Los Angeles, Cologne, Germany, and Hong Kong. This gives us, again, 24-7, 365 coverage. And again, we have considerable expansion plans on a global scale. And then we come to what was traditionally our core business of cargo and commercial and private jet charters. And Chapman Freeborn is a world leading company in this sector where we work with a lot of third party operators on a global scale in movements of supply chains for corporations. A lot of freight forwarding companies work with us, uh, again, on a global scale, as well as governmental and humanitarian organizations. So we've been involved in every single humanitarian and you know conflict on the planet in supporting the populations, the governments, and the humanitarian organizations with their supply chains, both on the passenger side as well as cargo. We um, also move uh, music bands for their world tours on a global scale, as well as high net worth individuals at short notice anywhere on the planet, wherever they want to go, we find solutions. And the key word here is solution. We are the world leading solution provider when it comes to charter requirements for cargo, whether that is a vehicle or livestock movements, as I said. So to continue on with the uh, overview of the company, I will pass you on to Sarah Petri, our global head of human resources. So Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I am very excited to be able to talk to you all today. Um, I'll start talking to you about uh, a little bit about our growth. So the Chapman Freeborn Group, we have actually grown our headcount number significantly uh, over the last few years. So in, for example, in 2019, uh, we were just over 240 people, which is half of what we have today. Um, we started our era of growth uh, in 2021, where we saw that big opportunity uh, for advancement within our part of the industry. We got very excited uh, about taking up more space. Uh, so we actually put a lot of focus on expanding our regions. And our regions, they, they, they are the Americas. Uh, Europe, Asia Pacific, India, Middle East, and Africa. In 2022, uh, we grew in all areas of the business uh, where um, we're talking about both commercial and corporate services, uh, because to us, they are equally important, or they were in specifically in 2022, where we needed to to ensure that we balanced ourselves sufficiently to support this change and the growth. So by doing that, we also recognize that when you increase headcount quickly, it will straight away impact the processes of the organization. So we worked uh, very hard to remove that, you know, any, uh, sorry, unnecessary administrative tasks and also relying a lot more on technology instead of having manual processes. Um, and so with the corporate services being well set up uh, to support that expansion, the focus this year uh, is actually to attract more candidates to our commercial services. Uh, and that just like Neil has explained, you know, that includes, uh, you know, the operational side, uh, the brokering, the sales, but also the uh, business development. Now, the exciting part uh, of our growth is that the you know, new regions, uh, new offices, markets, but also verticals will continuously be introduced to our organization. And this will naturally allow for new and exciting roles to come up, uh, which will provide a lot more opportunities for our people, but also our talents, which is you. 
Um, so we're looking for uh, people who are experienced uh, in those areas, but also keen aviation uh, enthusiasts. Uh, let me tell you a little bit more about our people. So we have offices all over the world, uh, and we're very proud of how diverse our workforce is. Now, I think it's amazing uh, to be able to say that we currently have 54 different nationalities recorded uh, across our group. And my direct team uh, in human resources is a prime example of how diverse just one department can be. So I work directly with people who are from the UK, from India, Lithuania, uh, Germany, uh, America, uh, Italy, Ireland, Singapore, and the Caribbean. I am originally from Sweden myself, uh, and I've been with Ch the, the Chapman Freeborn Group for over eight years. And what I personally enjoy so much uh, at this company is the people I get to work with. Now you can say in HR, you, I get to work with everybody, um, but our people, we like to have fun. We like to share experiences. So for example, if you were to speak to one of your international colleagues uh, or maybe visit another office, you do get such a nice, warm welcome and you do feel part of being part of such a wider group straight away. I think we are very lucky uh, to be able to work with so many people from all over the world. Um, and I don't think you get that uh, everywhere. I do think that that's a quite a rare thing. Um, let me move on to a little bit more about our open positions. So as you can see here, uh, it's just a snapshot, but uh, there are many exciting opportunities available at the moment uh, across the globe, both for you who are experienced uh, in the industry, but also for you who are not, but maybe are keen to join. You can scan these uh, QR codes for a redirection uh, to our various uh, career sites. But for those of you who maybe work in our industry already, you'll know that it's very fast paced. Uh, it's ever changing. Uh, you've heard this from the other presenters maybe today, but we think that that's what makes it very exciting because of all the possibilities that this industry allows. I can say that no day uh, is the same like another and you get the opportunity to expand uh, on your skills your experiences, uh, that you new experiences that you gain uh, every day. Once you join uh, our, com uh, sorry, our organization, you'll join a team that is uh, supportive from day one. We want to make sure that you feel part of the organization very quickly so that you can straight away get a sense of that warm and welcoming culture that we are so proud to have we want you, of course, to be able to get going in your role as soon as possible. So if you're interested, or maybe you know someone who might be interested, uh, please get in touch with, with me, with Neil, uh, um, or apply directly through, uh, through the website to any of the roles that you think looks good. I'm going to move on to talk a little bit about more about our culture. And it builds a little bit more about what Neil was explaining about the fact that we celebrate 50 years this year. Um, in September last month, we came together, uh, all of us, to, to, to celebrate across the whole world. Every office uh, celebrated on, on one particular day. And some of these QR codes here, they will show you some of the posts that our employees uh, shared uh, from that day. Um, our chairman, Rusi Batliwala, and uh, our group CEO, Eric Erbasha, they held calls with our people on the day uh, of the celebration to talk about our past uh, adventures uh, and also our past charters. But something that I particularly enjoyed myself was that they, on these calls, they openly shared fond memories with some of our longer serving employees, kind of sharing those stories and discussing those memories, um, which I thought was very, very lovely. Uh, they also talked about our future and where we are going. And personally, I also enjoy that quite a lot because it shows how open our culture is and we have this open door policy. Um, 
to add to that, the people within our group, I would consider us being very friendly. We would be very loyal, uh, very welcoming, of course. Um, but we're also very hardworking and we're very committed to our responsibilities. But something that uh, really stands out, I think, at Chapman Freebone Group is we are very entrepreneurial and creative. And those are skills that we actively celebrate. And we definitely encourage that uh, in everyone. But let me share some information with you about what you can expect uh, from us that will help you grow in your career. Now, the people focus currently is very much about inducting our new people efficiently, but also growing our existing people. And this is actually achieved through in-house training uh, and also by giving exposure to the new verticals or the markets. But we also like to use our internal knowledge through day-to-day -day coaching because we have such a large group of colleagues who have worked in our industry for many, many years, uh, and they play a key role when sharing knowledge internally. But what we also uh, encourage and we appreciate is the exchanging uh, of ideas and solution with those who have new and fresh ideas. In terms of training and learning, uh, we offer our people on-site uh, and classroom uh, training, but we also offer e-learning through internal resources. Our people, they actually gain access to LinkedIn Learning from day one, which is uh, just another additional tool for our people to enjoy, but also at their own pace. We will, of course, uh, continue to expand on our initiatives that helps our people grow, both professionally and personally. Um, but if you were to join us, uh, we'd look forward to exploring your preferred learning style to maybe better support you in your career with us. Thank you for your time. Sarah, Neil, thank you so much for sharing the story history and overview of Chapman Freeborn and your operations globally. With career opportunities that attract top talent and leading industry talent, as well as expertise uh, interested from our audience. So again, we will now be taking questions. Just go to slider.com and use the uh, event code hashtag career expo. So for our first question here, which Sarah, I'm going to come back to something that you mentioned during your presentation about the coming together of the Chapman Freeborn's uh, global, global locations and operations uh, for the celebration of your 50th uh, anniversary, as well as the 54 nationalities within your workforce, which really segues really nicely into this question, which is for which countries are you currently recruiting uh, in Chapman Freeborn? Where are we not recruiting for Chapman Freeborn? I think from us, so we have, there's lots of different locations in Europe, uh, not to mention, you know, what well, to mention some, uh, you know, we have the UK, we have Germany, Italy, Austria, Scandinavia, Slovakia, and so on. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities there. We also have Americas. Uh, so we have Canada, we have Mexico, we have the United States. Also, we have Singapore, Hong Kong. Uh, yes, so definitely there's lots of opportunities um, worldwide. Definitely take a look. And you can, they can always, any candidates, anyone can ask us questions at any time. Um, and we would be happy to explore new areas, I'm sure. Fantastic. Lots of opportunities there for members of our audience who are listening. Now, Neil, there is something that you emphasize during your part of the presentation, which is solutions and how Chapman Freeborn is the leading solutions provider of either air cargo or air charter operations. Now, the question we have here is asking about the possible remote vacancies, but maybe you can expand on that in just stating how this works into the entire global operations and where uh, Chapman Freeborn uh, operates to. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. Yes, in relation to this question, as I mentioned, we are involved globally and have been for five decades in every single conflict and, you know, uh, humanitarian um, issues, whether that is the current situation in Libya following the disastrous flooding, uh, conflict in Sudan that started in April this year, earlier this year, Turkey and Syrian earthquakes, 
Morocco very recently with also a, a very bad earthquake. We have people located in strategic locations, you know, to support our customers' needs and ultimately the civilian populations. You know, when uh, when the Taliban took over Afghanistan, for example, you know, we moved 15,000 people from Afghanistan out of the country into, you know, Middle Eastern countries, obviously all by air. When the pandemic hit, we moved over 20,000 cruise ship members to their home countries. And our teams are global. And the good thing, I think, an exciting thing as a career prospect is that, you know, you can be based and hired and recruited, say, in the United Kingdom, and you grow your career in the company, there's an opportunity for you to go and live in Canada, for example. That's happened with one of our employees. We've got people that have relocated to London from their home country of South Africa, for example. You know, So we really do focus on promotion from within. You know, If you look on LinkedIn today, for example, you will see James Edwards, who was recruited as a general manager for the United Kingdom in February of this year. He is now being promoted to vice president for passenger solutions for the European region. You know, so we are on a rapid growth path and recruiting talent from all over the world. Right. So if you have a passion for aviation, and a passion for solutions, join a winning team. That's Chapman Freeborn. Neil, thank you so much for emphasizing that and joining the winning team. Now, for our next question here, Sarah, I'm going to direct it to you. And the question directly is asking that, are you open to hiring expats? And do you provide sponsorship for qualified expat applications or applicants? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely certain. I mean, we're we're open, definitely, to having conversations uh, regarding that. I mean, we are diverse and very proud of it, and we do like the movement uh, of people upon their own requests. And I mean, for the right skills, um, we will definitely want to and want to invest uh, in that person. So definitely, is that something we'll be more than happy to discuss? And to to get and also to add add to that, if I may, you know. The person that heads up Australia, New Zealand, based in Melbourne, is a UK national. He's an expatriate. The person that heads up our cargo division in the Middle East, based in Dubai, is South African. Right. So, yeah, we um, we are very supportive of expatriates. If they've got the skill sets required, we are interested and we will bring them on board. Fantastic. Thank you, Neil, for uh, expanding on that for us. So for those interested, coming back to Sarah again, how can those who are interested join the company? And in particular, the question here is that my work experience matches, matches the position that is being sought in this company. Like, what should they prepare? So Sarah, to you for this question. How can you join the company? Uh, apply, apply, apply. Uh, and if you're not sure, you ask for sure, for more information, we'd be more than happy to, to give that to, to anyone. Um, in terms of uh, how you can prepare, I think um, what we would very much benefit from knowing is maybe some examples that you could give uh, from your past experiences so through other jobs or through personal experiences uh, in, in, in your life. So definitely bring any examples that you think that might be relevant. In the end of the day, we when we interview for our, for our candidates of our positions we're keen to get to know you um, we we want to know the people that we're interviewing some colleagues of ours have mentioned that today that you know we hire also to for people to be part of our values and who, what we are and what we represent um, so definitely you can't overshare uh, I think is the guidance so definitely bring anything to the table we'd like to get to know you 
Thank you for sharing that, Sarah. And coming to our final question here, which really caps everything together, which I'm going to direct towards Neil. And the question is, what can people expect or look forward to when joining CHAP and Freeborn? So, Neil, over to you for this final question. Thank you, Michael. So, a great question. So, thank you for asking. Um, you can expect a great career with great prospects. Um, you can expect international travel, get to see the world and really enjoy the aviation industry and meet colleagues from around the globe and really elevate your career regardless of what position you're currently in, you know. And I think one thing that's key to mention here is we've mentioned diversity. Chapman Freeborn has a workforce of 47% female employees. Women in aviation are also a critical point for us. And it's really elevated our organization, right? So we've got a, a really good balance. And, you know, so you can expect a lot from Chapman Freeborn. Your career path can go from working in our passenger division to working in, in Tradco, the livestock division. This has happened in our company. We encourage people to move around and learn within the company. You know, we've got um, a professional training manager on board that spent many, many decades in the aviation world, working with some of the world's most renowned airline operators. So we've got world-class training programs in place. And so you can expect to really elevate your career. And like I said, we've been around for 50 years. So if you're young, if you're old like me, there's opportunity. Come and join us and have some fun. Well, Neil, Sarah, thank you so much for your answers to this session and really giving us uh, and our audience a full picture of the scope of Chapman Freeborn's global operations and the global opportunities that are available. Absolutely. Now, the full spectrum of aviation uh, is made up of multiple facets and layers, all intertwining and working together on a daily basis. However, as we gather here today, let us reflect on the profound truth that no aircraft can take flight, no logistics can be perfected, and no innovation can take place without the dedication, passion, and expertise of the people and individuals who make up this remarkable industry. Joining us now is Inga Stanyunye, the Chief HR Officer, and she will enlighten us on the pivotal role of people in any organization and how it shapes the future of global av aviation. So Inga, over to you. Hello, Michael. So I should say that good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on the which time zone you reside currently. So um, being the last one speaker on this stage, actually, I can just be very short and say that I can confirm on everything what was said from the group of companies and the HR people or the representatives. But just to give you um, a short overview and uh, towards people and culture, I want to start from uh, the processes that HR people deal or work on a daily basis. So my role here is to present and to share the view um, towards people and cultural development on the group level. So the main HR strategy overall of the group in the group is just to support our business growth by fostering and taking care of processes related to people or people development. So sharing with you these processes that you can see there are a lot that we are taking care, that we support our managers and employees. I want just to highlight how many different approaches we can unlock when working in the HR field. So what I want to say that um, as, a, as a global company and having offices in um, hundreds of different um, countries and locations, um, we, have the main, um, we have the main core of the processes. 
nevertheless, each and every single company, they have their unique culture. They have the unique, um, well, traditions. And they, of course, they put something that is very unique and specific only for them. So um, we doubled, actually, our headcount in the last four years, um, which means that our offices distribution got over all continents. And uh, by hosting um, more than 100, you know, different um, nationalities under one roof, we learn how to deal and how to work with the different cultures. Actually, we're continue learning and we're continue knowing each other. Looking at this uh, demographic information, and that was said just recently from Chapman Freeborn and the other companies, we are dealing quite well in terms of the gender uh, balance and the age distribution. Uh, this, well, I would say in balance or the lower percentage in the feminine, you know, um, positions in Asia and the North Europe is very much related to the business concentration there, which is more MRO business or the ground handling. But overall, I would say that I'm really happy that we are quite successful and um, very well in terms of diversity and inclusion. Unlocking and talking about um, other moments, um, what we what we have on the group level, I'm really proud, and I want to share that and and to confirm as well from what was said uh, during the previous presentations. We are focusing and we pay a lot of attention on internal promotions. And for me, you know, this indicator, like um, internal promotions indicator, shows um, how speedy we can be by nurturing our talents and that we do have a potential um, and potential um, for the newcomers as well, which is very, well, good to know inside the group. There was not mentioned or that uh, I would like to highlight that there is a possibility to move across the group, which means that intra-group moves of course, we do have some rules, internal regulations that everyone who wants to move across the group have to follow. But we do um, promote and we encourage our people to move and to change the business and the segment. I want to share that I'm really happy that seven years in a row, actually, I joined this company nine years, nine years ago and um I've started, you know, I've just, um, I think that that was the beginning of the engagement survey. So seven years in a row, uh, we used to run an engagement survey. And last year, that was um, a very successful year that we covered all our companies. All our companies participate. They took place in that survey. And there were across 7,000 um, employees who were invited to take their part in the survey as we name it, have your say. And the engagement survey actually is that an indicator that we follow as well and the KPIs that we track. And it shows uh, the areas where we are good at and the areas that we take care more, that we have to, you know, to, to put more attention and to deliver some results that our employees will look for. So I'm really happy to present that, uh, comparing the previous year, uh, 2021 and 2022 result, we have, I would say, a really significant increase of the engagement score, um, taking all the data from all the companies. So it was, it was increased by 6% up to 42% overall in the group. By having such active, you know, and engaged and uh, satisfied people, I would say that it is really easy to work and to develop new initiatives that reflect uh, market trends or the latest trends. So as mentioned before, during the company's presentation and as well at the beginning of my presentation, each and every company differs by their culture, by their traditions, you know, in some cases, local jurisdictional, jurisdictional regulations. On the other hand, uh, they are 
have the core basis or the core values that we follow. So due to these differences, of course, I mean, benefit lists, activities or local initiatives, they may vary. But, um, well, the main ones, the majority of them that are listed here in this um, slide, you can meet and you can find at any place um, wherever you will be employed. And this slide, you know, it's my one of the favorites. And I can speak uh, endless about people development and about investment uh, into our people. And that is the area that I'm personally interested in. And I want to share that um, many of our companies, they run a different leadership programs for the first time managers. By the way, we started to, to invest a lot uh, to those uh, management basic pro programs where people join the managerial position or were promoted to managerial position for the first time. So we just um, deliver, you know, like the basics, how to communicate, how to deal with people, how to give a feedback, where are my boundaries and what are my main responsibilities taking such a role. And as well, there are some programs for senior leaders. And that is not one-time programs. Basically, we run those programs every year. And in some cases, for, for example, management basics, they run every quarter. So, you know, we have a lot of people that we want to be trained on the same um, on the same level of skills. So during that continuous learning and um, internally, especially, uh, there is another goal that we are seeking or aiming that our people, they can learn from each other. So basically they share their experience, they share their knowledge and they learn from each other. Once more, uh, moreover, I would like to emphasize here that once in a quarter, we invite our people to take a classes on mental health. And that's the topic actually that we started to focus more and more after pandemic, after COVID. So once a quarter, they are able to join classes about work-life balance or stress management or emotional intelligence. And, and, and that um, goes actually every year at every country. So people join online, no matter which place they are located, just joining and listening and learning. What I want to share in addition about uh, learning and development, which is, I would say, the at this time is the most significant or important part at the HR side, is that we do have experts in our teams, in our organizations. And we do not hide our skills, we do not hide our experience or the knowledge, and we are very much open of sharing this, um, well, experience and knowledge by participating in the internal or the external conferences. So we are here to share, we are here to learn, we are here to deliver some results by learning. And, you know, having such a, uh, I would say, wonderful history, like uh, 10 years being as a group, and more than 50 years, like as a single overall businesses that we have in our portfolio, we already know how essential it is to develop, de deliver, and follow some traditions. So I want just to highlight one of the traditions that is very important. I know that it's very much awaited that every year, December, during annual leaders meeting, we are worried 15 best employees in the group and display their um, achievements on the wing of honor. So basically 15 employees from all the group, they are selected because of some outstanding results they showed, because of some achievements they made during last year or the previous year. Uh, and they have the honor to be on the stage, uh, to be awarded, uh, to take some some kind of special time to meet other colleagues from from around from all over the world, and um, quarter or other appreciation uh, programs are also well designed at separate companies, and I know there are as much awaited in their companies as well. So, um, you know, counting such a rich history and focusing on a very, very bright future and promising future, we are here 
and at this conference, at this Korea Expo, just to shout out about upcoming cover plans and about the success that we are really proud of. And that's actually the main idea or the main, in well, um, yeah, the main idea of implementing ambassadors' um, initiative across the group. So having more than 120 global ambassadors from 16 different countries, we can be really calm and confident that all our latest achievements will be announced properly. So if you want to become our ambassador, if you want to share something from aviation or you are inspired by some aviation, you can use those two, two hashtags, Living Aviation or Career Wings on social media. And that's how we will see how the ambassador, you know, group or community is becoming bigger and bigger. And coming to an end, I want to say that the future is now. And if we want to be successful tomorrow, I would say that we should start taking actions today. And I trust that during today's conference, you received some insight or inspirations to start your tomorrow today. So thank you for your time. It was a really pleasure to be with you here. Inga, thank you so much for your presentation and really giving an overview of the role of people across the group, but also the group's focus and contribution to the development and recognition of people across the group. So now we'll be taking our final round of questions. So just go to slider.com and use the event code hashtag career expo. So today we've had a lot of questions submitted across our event, and now we're going to try and sum it all up. So for our first question here, Inga, something that you spoke about very vividly, the question is, could you describe your company's or Avia Lucy Group's approach to employee development and training programs? I want to start actually uh, from, from the step, you know, um, to back, which is that, that who is the responsibility for that development? It's the company's responsibility or the employees. So I would say uh, that in our group, we have like um, this split that the professional skills, they, they are developed and they are should be cared by each and every employee. And when it comes to soft skills or the leadership skills training, so yes, that's the company's you know, priority and area to focus. So what was said in my presentation, currently we really see value and we invest a lot into the managerial skills, which means that um, if a person became first time manager, so we will support and we will guide him or her during that journey. So that's the main focus that we are turning now and directing our learning and development process. Inga, thank you for sharing that. And maybe just expanding on something you spoke, you spoke about, these soft skills that you look for. Could you expand for us and tell us what are the qualities and skills that you particularly look for for these candidates who are interested in roles across the group? So if we speak about aviation-related roles, so I would say that, well, the first, you know, focus that we will look, or the first, you know, uh, thing that we will look at is the experience and the certificates or the qualification needed for the specific role that the person applies for. When it comes to administrative functions or the back office, of course, there are some functions that we will look at those technical part or the technical side. On the other hand, we look for experience and we look for, you know, the character or the characteristics or the personality features, which is, you know, like there were many companies that mentioned that if you are, if you are, you know, brave, if you can, you know, like lift up the, the other people, if you can be, you know, like quick in terms of, you know, decisions and etc. I would say that being such a dynamic company as Avia Solution is, um, we really invite energetic people those who like dynamics and those who like um, growing every day and learn from each other every day, just to be like a very self-motivated in terms of achieving more, digging for new information, sharing that information with others. On the other hand, aviation is, you know, it's a really 
I would say stressful industry when, you know, like every second there are some kind of um, unexpected situations may come and occur. So basically the stress resilience is one of the characteristics that we look at, the one of the feature that we usually ask during the interviews. Okay. And the third one that I would like to emphasize here actually, and just to highlight that um, the nowadays situation when we all are busy, when there are no boundaries in terms of, in, in some cases, you know, work and life and etc. I used to ask, you know, especially for the top managers about their leisure time and how do they rest? Because I do believe that having that balance, work-life balance, it is really um, what it is a direct link to, to to better results, to being more productive or efficient at your work. So just like that. Thank you, Inga, for sharing that. And maybe just expanding on that, you spoke about uh, the work-life balance and also just this recognition and focus of people uh, in, in, in across the group. Joining us as well is Jonas. And Jonas, as part of your presentation earlier, you spoke about the safety culture across the group. But maybe can you expand uh, for us as well and tell us uh, some of the measures that are taken to expand on both passenger and employee safety across the group? Well, I, I'm not sure there's much to, to, to add uh, uh, because of every aviation regulation is constantly monitored and, and reported um, on a group level, especially on, on, on newly established AOCs, on newly established uh, companies. We also give significant importance to, to, to the safety, to, to, to the compliance and, to, and also to reliability of operations. We want to build a strong band, background, strong foundation for the future. Mm, I would say like this. Well, Jonas, thank you for uh, expanding on that uh, for us. And coming to our very final question here, which uh, in a few words is asking that, what is uh, what makes Avia Solution Group stand out as the employer of choice in the aviation industry? I'll open this question to the both of you. Jonas, would you like to answer or should I take it? Oh, you can take it. No, on my side, I can like, say, say, say shortly. Um, I think that, that, that the growth levels that we, we are showing, they are, they are like on one hand, uh, they are sustainable and long term. We, we've been doing this for the for, for last 10 years. And I'm sure we will continue that for, for the next uh, 10 years. Um, that's on one hand. On the other hand, uh, really, group provides not just just uh, opportunities within each particular particular company or segment, but also intersegmental movement, uh, movement to different geographies. If 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 people are, are willing to take to take on the challenges, mm, that's 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 quite strong part because. Um, we are we are all we are omnipresent and, and our presence over time will, will increase even further in different regions of the world mm -hmm. i would add actually that um, we have a very uh, clear vision and we have a goal and that give us you know like a confidence um, especially during um, well the crisis or this moment that we cannot control everything so having a goal, uh, which is very clearly communicated, you know, during that event that I mentioned, the leaders meeting, uh, that give us, you know, like uh, some confidence to, to all employees all around the world. So I would say in terms from the business perspective, so the goal, achieving that goal, uh, communicating that goal very clearly and following that goal with giving, you know, some, um, I would say, feedback on the milestones that we already achieved, I think that one one of the things or the, you know, like um, outstanding characteristics that we are, you know, like um, top employer in the industry. On the soft skills or the soft part, so yeah, we are reflecting the latest trends. I think that we are very much a people-oriented company. 
our managers, they are trained how to work and how to support our employees. Um, so I would say that um, that's the main things or the main, you know, points that I would like to highlight here. Well, Inga, Jonas, thank you so much for your answers to this Q&A session, really giving us a full view of the opportunities, development, and the career growth parts available across Avia Solutions Group. Now, as we draw the curtains on this enlightening online event, I want to take a moment to express our deepest gratitude to all our viewers who joined us today. Thank you to each and every one of you for being part of this online career expo hosted by Avia Solutions Group. And a special thanks goes out to our esteemed speakers from Avion Express, BBN Indonesia, BA Training, SmartLinks Airlines, FR Technics, and Chapman Freeborn, who share their insights into their companies and the actions that you, the viewers, can take towards the next steps of your careers in aviation. Now, if you would like to know more or to get in touch with any one of the speakers or companies they represented, please do so by contacting info at aviasg.com or you can visit career.aviasg.com to find out more. Once again, thank you for joining us for this online career expo. And until we meet again, take care, stay inspired. Thank you and goodbye.